Hello, everyone. Welcome into NECC. I'm Wealku. I'm joined by my astute friend here, Treasure. How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty well, Wealku. I'm pretty excited to get into some matches with the NECC tonight. We've got the Bryant Bulldogs and Hawkeye Community College coming up first for tonight. Yeah, let's get a look at these rosters. See what uh, what, what's shaking. Yeah, the Bulldogs here, they're bringing Snake, Semi, Cheesy, Skippy, and Soviet. So they're going to be a little bit older across the board than their competitors. They've got a senior and a junior, two juniors, uh, and a couple freshmen. So uh, this is going to be a roster that's got some depth to it as far as uh, the future seasons go. And, of course, as already uh, members of the Champions Division, we will be continuing to see quite a bit of the Bryant Bulldogs. Yeah, on the other side of things, we'll take a look at Hawkeye Community College here, CC for short. We had Hazard Bear, Lobster Wagons, Pete, and Atlas. Uh, interestingly enough, both of these teams have won their first matchup in week one, bye week for this division last week, so that no one, none of these teams in this division played. And then, obviously, now here is the chance for one of them to go up to 2 0 to start the season out. So that'll be good for them, right? Good start. So we're going to now look at those maps, though, see what we have going for us. Where are we going to go? We can see the first couple bands, and then the picks are going to be Coastline, then Cafe, and another couple bands, and the decider, if we get there, will be on Oregon. So any impressions right off the bat here uh, looking at these maps, Treasure? Yeah, I like that we've got a couple of the less played maps to start off with in the regulation uh, maps. We've got Coastline and Cafe guaranteed. So these are a bit more exciting, really encouraging some vertical play. A lot of soft destruction is going to come into effect and mitigation or capitalization on the roam game, I think, is going to be hugely impactful through these. Indeed, on Coastline as well, you don't expect to see the same bands. Obviously, Jackal is pretty powerful on a smaller map, so I might see him banned up. But Thatcher, not always banned on this map. Still sometimes, but not really a necessity compared to some other ones. So we'll see what they come through with. Jackal is going to be the first one off the board. On the defense, I expect to see Valkyrie banned because their cams are still able to be thrown outside. We'll see if that changes in the future, like they're saying. Um, but that's uh, some of the ones I'm expecting. Anything on your end? Yeah, no, that's pretty much in line with what I expect here. Earlier, you mentioned that both these teams are currently sitting at 1-0 and o with a bye last week, which is pretty exciting, actually, because not only are they 1-0 and o each, but they both won in three games, two one victories in pretty similar competitive round counts. So right now, they're looking dead, dead even uh in the their division. So I'm really excited to see where they start to pull away from each other, and they're continue with the bands back to it we did get that nomad and that's a little exciting there's definitely some run out and obviously roam potential like i was mentioning before that she's going to do quite a bit to shut down with her air jabs yeah so now that she's off the board you have to rely on a gridlock claymores cams whatever else to cover your butts uh the last one to go out is going to be mirror that's nothing surprising. I don't know if she's super powerful on this map, but outside of the Valk, it's like, what else do you get rid of? Again, hard breach isn't super important, so the Kate isn't really going to be chosen here, just like the Thatcher wasn't. So what are you going to go with? Well, the Mira, she can still be played in some bomb sites, so might as well just get rid of that possibility. We're going to go now into the first round, and looking at the bomb site, it's a little odd here, Trej. Penthouse and Theater are going to be the first one we're going to, which for most teams might not even be a site you go to. Yeah, that's probably the rarest objective to be the first pick. They're bringing a bandit as well, so they're going to be watching the walls over by theater and a castle as well. I think we can expect them probably going over the penthouse window and maybe being used over by VIP to try and slow down some progress through the roam clear by hookah. And that might support some more roamers, or they might even try something like an isolated hold with the castle, just trying to uh, castle off a room like VIP and make sure that they can hold it for as long as possible and try to play to die. Looking at what is being brought, I mean, a Claymore on the Zofia is going to make it so you have to use either your fists or an explosive in the hands of grenades. Are uh, the gone sixes or Zofia's charges themselves to get rid of these castle barricades. And on top of it, you also have to clear out the evil eyes. So just going by the operator lineups, this is pretty much a win in that uh, opening 
uh, engagement of the minds, we'll call it, with Bulldog because their defensive lineup is going to be hard to clear for Hawkeye. It's not impossible, certainly, but there's going to be some areas that they're probably going to be left uncleared, and so they're going to have to be very choosy with where they're going to use that utility. Well, I must say, as far as the throwables and explosives, Hawkeye Community College has come strapped with them. Every single member of their team has something that's at least going to burn out some Jaegers. Uh, we've got the Ying with five throwables on her own, and plus the, the Yana and Zofia, who are just guaranteed to bring more throwables. Uh, I assume probably the Gon 6 on Lion as well, meaning explosives in the hands of all but two characters what, what uh, no that's Oop. a wasted that's... name oh, oh, that's one of those explosives <laughs> we were just talking about how they're gonna be have to be a little bit choosy with those that's one off the board already you still have four castle barricades and two evil eyes to clear out on top of burning out the ads is what you mentioned they can easily do with the other utility but still that's uh that's a grenade you're probably going to want in the future here yeah, definitely a little spooky to be losing that, especially since they're so effective below. We've been seeing that SI that is just undeniable how effective drones above and bombs below can be. So when those off the board uh, is a little bit hurtful, it could really be helpful clearing out a player from VIP we're looking at. Right now, it's a bit of a stalemate, though. Neither team quite finding what they want, and it might come down to Hawkeye Community College being a little slow on their round clear one of their players going to be disconnected here so that's almost a first pick for the round going in favor of bulldogs they're going to be sitting pretty seeing that yeah that's going to hurt a lot for hawkeye that's a player down and i guess in chat you can even see someone did anyone else just freeze so something must be going on we should be aware a lot of these players are either playing from an apartment or something or they're even at their school building a lot of the time so maybe it's just a local internet issue if the other team did say that they didn't have any issues so i thought maybe servers are having issues sometimes it does right but as you can see ads gonna eat up the gone six shot grenades gonna have to come and clear that evil eye and that's just clearing the 90 area snakes are gonna get killed on the atlas thing real first kill right there peep being killed into tss skippy though refragging back onto hazard bear and things are still going in the favor of the bulldogs here as hawkeye are going to be floundering in a 2v4 with only a little over 30 seconds remaining vip is such an important room and not to have any pressure from outside through that wall at all especially with the potential for hard breach to be brought on the attacking roster uh that just left semi to be free to play out in vip for the entire round he, he got his impact and made for a great crossfire here and big props to his teammate for pushing up on that with the alda there and just clearing out elbow well skip it getting a 3k i believe we're going to have to have a player rejoin us. Hopefully, we don't have to go to a full-on re-host with that player disconnecting. But if that has to happen, then we will certainly do so to get them back in the lobby. But again, those can take some time. So we'll see how this all shapes out. But looking at that first round, again, it didn't already go in their favor, really, with that nade throw and then a player disconnect. So Hawkeye kind of got to give that round. It's It's a washed round at that point. You can't critique them too hard now you did say some pressure could have been applied elsewhere which certainly would have helped but a weird site you weren't expecting on top of some issues coming through and both the connections and the utilities so hopefully this next round for them gonna be a little bit more standard yeah hcc kind of taking an l there on some unfortunate circumstances but at least they'll be more prepared for the penthouse hold in the future since they're seeing that that's the first rotation that bulldogs have gone with uh, so we get a little bit of information here while we're waiting for that reconnect on some operators. Uh, looking at the hookah lounge hold, that's more standard. It's what Hawkeye Community College is going to be expecting. This time they are looking, the first operator that they locked in initially was Hazard Bear's ace right there so that they can guarantee some consistent hard breaching. And I think that's a response to what I was just mentioning about opening up VIP and making it hard for players to play in a stronghold like that, which is going to be just as valuable on hookah as it is on, pen well, maybe a little less than on penthouse, but it's still a very valuable room well when we get that situated we're going to come back to our lovely faces over here well as you said we'll see how it's going to shake up on the second round a little more standard not as utility heavy that's like the one bomb site where hard breaching is actually going to be relatively useful right uh, every other bomb yeah. site not as useful maybe on vip wall if you're attacking hookah and you want to get that clear there 
both the wall itself on onto the balcony, but also into the hallway sometimes, right? Open up those lines of sights towards billiards. But at the end of the day, is it super necessary? Not always. A lot of times you'll see an aqua push anyway, which requires like no hard breaching. So, you know, depending on how you want to play it, this is again a map that that utility is not going to be very necessary except that bomb site. So good uh, throw That's like off. That's the one time you might really want a Thatcher, funny enough. Right. So it's a good he's job just going to save so much off. time doing with the bandit. I agree. Yeah. He, he, they threw him off, had the bandit for denial, even if they had brought it. Right. So uh, again, uh, kudos to the Brian Bulldogs for that defensive hold. But now Hawkeye have a chance here to actually come in a little bit more prepared for what they're going to meet. Now, I'm wondering, though, with how long this takes, do we go to a short break? I'll let the uh, producers here tell us what uh, the decision will be. Yeah, it looks like we're going to go for a re-host here to make sure that those connection issues are fully started out. So we're going to go to a short break here. We'll just be gone for a couple minutes before we come right back with the rest of Brian Bulldogs versus Hawkeye Community College. See you soon.
hopefully. Um, back into this one. Bulldogs won the first round. Kind of a, a scuffed affair, but that's all right. These things happen. Rehost is done. Now we're able to just jump in. It's going to be Hawkeyes trying their second round of attack here. First round was not successful, but they're going to a more standard bomb site. I was a little bit excited to see them hovering the ace before the rehost, but the Ying's coming back, the Yana's coming back, Buck and Zofia, but we've got the addition of the Decay B this time. So that's going to be probably a direct answer to the Maestro that we saw earlier, and the Maestro was very impactful there at the end, I think getting the triple kill on the round, and of course those cameras are just always going to be adding so much value and getting some eyes right in the Saiyan hookah could be really valuable to the attack if they're able to get her hack off indeed and well uh, it'd be nice also to have an opening kill then to get that hack into their you know cameras so they're gonna need that opening pick if they want to and it has to be in a position they can actually hack it too right that's the other thing so a few things need to fall their way but you know, at the very least, the, the sounds of the calls could give away positions and help them net some kills. And that's really her main utility. The, the hacking honestly feels like it's just an, an extra bonus okay, when you bring her if you're able to get that off. But looking at the lineup, they do have some hard breach capabilities this time. They learned from last time. They're like, well, we can't go without any hard breach. It's not a hard breach main, but if you look at the Ying, she does have that backup utility in her pocket. Two of them, in fact. So that'll allow them to get anything open up, any lines of sight even. But the spawn peak coming out, there's a lot of damage to Atlas. Not able to quite net that kill, so Skippy not going to be too happy with that. I feel like they felt like that one got away from them. Just barely, too. We saw those bullets just hovering by Alice's head. But Alice will persevere regardless. Uh, you mentioned bringing the hard breach gadgets. There's actually two on uh, Hazard Bear and Atlas here. They did, did get to hang on to Alice's, but they did uh, throw five throwables by the wayside. Still not going to be a huge problem. They've got plenty available to them, and those ones are mostly going to be for burning out the Jaeger ADSs. But that is a thing that could be potentially an impact for the cost uh, to bring some hard breach this time around. They're going to be pushing up, uh, putting some pressure directly onto Hookah right off the bat. That's going to make it pretty... Uh, a pretty nasty deterrent, especially with an LMG out here to be playing on Hookah or peeking the window or door. Some intel over here in Aqua is also going to be really nice. Hazard Bear is getting ready to drone his teammate and try and find them from below. And right here below, Atlas is already oh. ready, but Skippy there is finishing the job. Finds the headshot this time. No damage on himself either, so that's going to make sure that his teammate upstairs is plenty safe. Those calls going to ring in now, but maybe too little too late as their player has already fallen by the wayside. And as you mentioned, Skippy going to be able to clean up the kill they weren't able to get in the beginning on that spawn peak. So I guess a little bit of uh, justice served for them as they are able to get their redemption on that missed opportunity. That's going to leave Hawkeye now in a one-man disadvantage and time ticking away. They don't seem to really have gained much ground here is the real concern, honestly. Losing a player, yeah, not great, but had they gained some ground for it, put themselves in a good position, it might have been worthwhile, but not the case. That Buck, hoping that they could clear out some of those players over in Aqua, but they weren't able to do anything. They really didn't get any soft destruction. You saw, though, Buck was waiting patiently. Skippy, second kill on the round on to Pete. Things are heating up for them, and... Hawkeye's still cool after a slow start. Things not going any better in the second round. Yeah, those two kills right off the bat are going to make it hard to work with only 45 seconds remaining at this point. Hazard trying to make something work, throwing a flash down, uh, maybe to allow some teammates some better access, or at least covering his flank as he tries to drop in and get into Aqua. But Skippy is going to strike once again. That's three kills so far through luggage. Wagons downed as well as Bryant finds one for oh, himself. No. Oh, no. An unfortunate <laughs> flip there is going to barely cost it. Skippy gets away with a 4K this round no that was so uh, relatable he just misclicked the <laughs> button relatable. accidentally flip out and then also i think they maybe forgot they had a dmr because they just tapped it once and then hit the other button on accident and they're like oh wait what no no <laughs> they just get picked I, choo I choose but to believe it was the confidence in the headshot that just wasn't uh, quite yes. there that's also relatable. It, it would have right? been a real flex. It would have been a real flex. But that's 2-0 for Bulldog. Uh, the Bulldogs of Bryant. <laughs> they are feeling pretty good here. They've won their first and second objectives. They're heading down to Kitchen. This is a relatively 
straightforward objective to hold. They're going to need some vertical presence, but the Rome has been really nice to them, and Semi's going to be bringing out the Vigil. I'm sure Skippy's going to be plenty available upstairs looking for some more performance like last round as well with that brilliant 4K. But the attackers do have plenty sufficient vertical pressure tools. Indeed, that's going to be the sledge. They were bringing Buck before, realizing that that was not what they wanted to do, especially now that you know, they've gone to two sites upstairs. You know they have to go somewhere down below, whether that's Sunrise in Blue or here in Kitchen Service. And so Sledge can't do much when they're above you. Can't shoot above with his sledgehammer. Can't throw it at the ceiling. <laughs> Wish he could sometimes, but certainly can do a lot of damage here on the bottom floor as they're going to go try and get that vertical play as you had just mentioned. The evil eyes and ADSs and shields are a constant thing, it seems, for Bryant. Is they're going to be holding out and playing the utility game a little bit. And now that they've had a little bit of time to get adjusted to it, you can see that Hawkeyes certainly have the capability of clearing it out. That's exactly what the fuse is probably being brought for. Let's just go above with the vertical pressure of the sledge. We can also just put down some of those fuse chargers and clear out the shields, the evil eyes, the ADSs, whatever you want. There's a lot of them to go around. Yeah, I feel like the Finca has been recently running so that our fuse may chug along on top of site and drop plenty of bombs and us a couple ADSs spread out in three different positions we saw earlier are going to do nothing to stop the onslaught from Fuse's uh, gadget if he's able to get one of those off. But Semi is that big hurdle to deal with in VIP. We've seen VIP be a big point of contention before in round one, and I think that's going to be one of the biggest first points to start with. Hazardberry is looking to go up there as well, getting some pressure and having opened up VIP wall as well. It's going to start flushing out the realm. Missed opportunity, Hazard, but Atlas able to clean up that kill anyways. The pressure did enough to move him out of the position. They obviously opened that wall, which pressured them into the uh, guitar area or Hall of Fame, whatever you'd like to call it. And Atlas there to just push up and get the kill as they were unsuspecting, having a lot of panic, I imagine, as they're getting pushed from a lot of different angles. Wagon is going to be using those fuse charges, like we mentioned, try and clear out some of this utility below. And there goes the shield, there goes the evil eye, and there goes a lot of utility that could have been a problem and no longer will be. The attackers getting a lot of ground gained, a lot of things taken care of. The sledge getting some vertical pressure now in A as well, so things looking good for them. But as you can look and see, time is starting to tick down, so they're gonna wanna think about what execute they wanna do before it slips away from them. But they have a man advantage on top of this, things looking good on the side of Hawkeye. Yeah, already I'm looking this is looking like a much more confident attack. And with another kill on top of it, uh, Atlas gets immediately refragged out by Bryant, who's been waiting. Uh, he's avoided all of those fuse charges, narrowly escaping with his life after all those bombs dropped. But he's still going to be there to make the difference. Uh, plenty of intel. Ooh, Insight is going to keep eyes on the plant holder, but Skippy finding that intel runs out or not runs out but opens up the window and finds himself that kill they're even on player count uh but skippy is going to have to do something to make sure he can get out of there his teammate snakes finds the kill for him though yeah saving his life there as he was flashed didn't have the crossfire necessarily with them at first but then the body moves into their lines of sight tss gonna get wagons pete finding snakes 1v2 situation it's not looking great hawkeye had that advantage but again things just not falling for them taking too many ones and losing them time is going to go down and into zeros as bulldogs, dogs the bryant bulldogs they find three in a row that's a full rotation of sights and hawkeyes are stimmy I am really curious to see how the rotation goes from here. That round, Hawkeye Community College had a great first minute. They got exactly what they wanted. They got their first pick. They got their vertical pressure. They pushed the anchors out of their power positions. But there wasn't anything downstairs to really capitalize on it. They had their plant holder downstairs, Hazard Bear watching the window. Uh, he, he got killed off by a... a cheeky play by skippy that's not terrible like you you can survive that but you need someone to be in a position to lock down that rotation uh from skippy you can't let him get back to site for free and you need someone else to play off of those empty power positions you've got someone playing on kitchen window but where's that service entrance where's that lobby pressure uh 
Once you push them out, you you have to stop the rotations. So that's a little bit of coordination that we saw start to degrade through the mid round from Hawkeye Community College. Indeed, not getting refrags is one of the biggest problems with teams when they lose a round. It is oftentimes the reason that they aren't able to win rounds is because they're just losing bodies without anything being gained. I mentioned before, sometimes you can gain ground and it's worthwhile or time, especially as a defender peeling back. You lose a body. Uh, did you buy two minutes of a round of three minutes? Then yeah, that's pretty decent for just one body. Uh, but on the attacking side, you don't really have that luxury. Time is against you. So really losing bodies without refrags is, is huge for them. And they just let it happen too many times that last round. Like you said, just the coordination not quite up to par. And while well, they have a, another opportunity now to get some redemption, they should know where they're going to be attacking as this is that first bomb site that they had seen come out from Bryant Bulldog. So now they just need to put in a plan to adjust, to not be caught unawares as they were the first round. This time they should know what they need to do and they should just learn how to execute in a way that can counteract this defense. Yeah, the Rome has been absolutely deadly so far. Uh, and I guess on the other side, Skippy uh, and uh, I thought, uh, well, Skippy on the Maestro this time. So that's going to be a little bit different. We're not going to be seeing Skippy out there. I mean, he's sitting on that 5 0 since the re host. And uh, yep. I guess some kills on the first one, too, I think, or at least one. But. He's doing great. They're switching out who is on the roam there. We're seeing Semi once again, adding a lot of pressure out here on Cool Vibe, just trying to waste as much time as possible with the first minute already burnt away. I mean, Semi must have like a rabbit's foot in the pocket because they just got lucky a couple times there where it seemed like they'd be caught and they were not. Harper's going to come in and VIP though. That's going to at least give them some access towards site, but not quite in the site yet we do see in the corner there is a rat player there but Har hazard bear didn't see them semi again with the rabbit foot in pocket is not going to be found out wagons though does find a teammate of tss so that's not going to help him the drone does finally get that information with the line scan coming through so those pings are going to come out and give their position away from below atlas lobster also finding a kill on to cheesy so that's two bodies found by hawkeye good coordination there skippy going to be very aggressive over into the corridor there but not able to gain anything and they're going to go back towards 90. pete climbing up uses the gone six but is caught with it in hand skippy going to peek out and get that kill lobster finding a kill but skippy finding another one is back and forth between these two but skippy is alone now in the 1v3 they found two of the kills they're going to need an ace or at least to buy enough time but the plant is coming through has it bear on that plant the rotation is not going to be accessible anymore with that open VIP wall. He's got to push into site. He's getting away with one health there, a triple kill, but it's not enough. Hazard Bear is there after getting the plant down to finish off and get payback for his teammate, who is so recently deceased. Skippy is just such a, a player. Not able to get that round for his team as Hawkeye Community College finds the board, but what what aggressive maestro plays that just continue to pay off even if he's going to be playing a three armor on elbow but you need support you know you can't do everything on your own sometimes you can i mean there are aces it's not unheard of but oftentimes it's not going to be the end result of a round especially in a 1v3 site has already been breached into they're starting to plant it's just a hard situation for skippy obviously playing their heart out getting a lot of kills a lot of frags but just lost too many people early on and you could see that they designated two bodies in the vip and they were easily found without a uh, wall being opened Defender, up and then the buck mom. from below that's why they brought it and it did pay off this time last time we've seen buck get picked off pretty early especially on this bomb site that we are now going to they were taken up by skippy below when they were on the roam on the malusi which they are again on that roll so buck Atlas is going to have to be very careful here. Clearly, we saw the effect they can have when they are alive and when they do that soft breach from below. But they cannot lose that without getting any soft breach from below because then their whole purpose is defeated. Semi is looking to play out by VIP. And Penthouse, once again, he was pushed out of this position pretty early on last time. So that might be a little bit of a hazardous place to be if Hawkeye Community College comes from that side. I think their drones were a little more focused on the north side in general, though. We'll see if another spawn peak comes out from the hookah hold. Skippy uh, downstairs this time. So not looking for the same thing twice, but still plenty scary down in the bars. 
Well, looking at the lineups, uh, Hard Breach being brought again on two different operators. That's pretty interesting when you think about it, because they've already know that they attacked the Pent, and last time they did win it, so maybe they thought they'd go there again. The peak from Skippy is going to be punished. He's gotten away with it before, but not this time. Atlas has their number. Hawkeye off to a good start getting that opening kill again. Yeah, yet another initial play between Atlas and Skippy. These two are going to have a little bit of a history here. The Aqua Push we've seen attempted before by Hawkeye Community College. They weren't able to quite find what they were looking for, but this time a nade with a live intel is going to be exactly what they want. Oh, it doesn't no. quite kill Cheesy, though. He heard that nade get popped and was able to run away with a, most of his life taken away, but still intact. He's still going to be up on, over some soft floor, though, with a buck below. That's going to be pretty hazardous. He doesn't need to take too much damage, but Semi is there to finish off after hearing all of those calls from his teammates, getting shot at from below. And now he's going to move away. He's got the uh, resistance to the drone that Lion brings as well, so he can keep moving even when that's the E1D is active. Trying to finish off the kills, Hazard Bear, not able to quite do it, but they got the down on the cheese, and they're aware of it, so they're just going to not go for a swing aggressively to finish off a kill, which is the smart play. Sometimes we do see players get aggressive just to clean up their kill. They want it in the stats and then they lose their life for it. So a smart play, I would say. Pushing in is Hazard. He's going to try and get the kill on the player in pink, but not able to do it. Snakes is going to peek out and get that kill and now able to help up their friend. But the push in from Lobster is also going to be paired with it. Cheesy, though, hiding like a little rat. He wasn't able to find him out. And Cheesy, with that peek up, gets the kill. Wagons, though, is already in the hookah, getting a kill semi on the back push gets Pete though. So Wagons has to do a lot here. I'm gonna be able to finish off that kill onto Cheesy. The 1v1 situation, 55 seconds, plenty of time. It's the zero. Does he have any cams that they can use to gather information to help themselves out in the 1v1? Have to grab that diffuser though, as it is down and not in their pocket. And Semi is just waiting here. We're gonna see that zero shooting off a cam. They're gonna be trying to locate that player, but didn't get the eyes onto them. Hopefully their teammate is on it to give the information, but pushing up, Sammy's gonna be able to peek out and get the kill! Wagons unable to come through in the 1v1 clutch. There we go. I love the patience from Semi. He knows he's got so many cards in his hands. He's got a strong rifle. He's got the angle. He doesn't really have to push up at all. And no matter how many cameras are gonna be brought, he's gonna be able to just sit there invisible and no matter how many teammates are going to be watching those zero cams, he's still plenty safe. A little mystery right there outside of Aquarium, which incidentally is, I think, where Hawkeye Community College's attack started to break down. And I think it all comes down to Cheesy not quite getting killed and actually getting to have some impacts there behind the bar once Snakes rezzed him. This is true, but I really want to give Semi a lot of credit there. Going on the flank, goes down into server, gets the peek on the man in office. That was Atlas, caught unawares. Didn't think another player would go down below to find them, but they did. And then finds Pete on the flank into the aqua from luggage. And then lastly, they're able to clean up the round. So 3K from Semi, but every kill super impactful. Having just a heck of a time going out and ruining the round and maybe even the day of Hawkeye as they... Really had a lot going for them, but Semi is really the one who put a stop to it. Now, going on to the last round of this half, Hawkeye hoping to find one more round because going down 1-5 on attacking coastline is not where you want to be. No, not at all. For Hawkeye Community College right now, it's got to be really frustrating to do so much right on each of these attacking rounds and for not even a breakdown really in their strategy or their execution but to just find something new and crazy from the Bulldogs defense every round that is just able to eviscerate their attack from what looks to be their strength. We finally got to see an Aqua push that was really well set up, a really well-placed frag grenade, just doesn't quite land a kill. Cheesy still gets downed. They have exactly what they want and they just can't quite get through Aqua because of a beautiful, beautiful flank that has so much impact there. So Hawkeye Community College, really feeling rough right now with this 4-1 but it's just that bulldogs have had the answer at every twisted turn kitchen defense we saw last time they got the opening kill and were able to get the vertical pressure but weren't able to carry it to fruition so hawkeye know how to get things started but the question really is can they deliver in the end round because that's where they've been hurt a lot of the time I do want to give credit, though. We mentioned the beautiful flank. Well, it was a beautiful observation that caught it. We saw all those kills coming 
through from semi last round. That's un the unnamed gamer is over in the UK. So not only a great observer, but also helping us out in a completely different time zone, different regions. So I want to give credit there and Zaychel being the producer for us. We always like to give thanks to those who help us with these productions, make things possible, give us great gameplay uh, and gives us great production in general, right? So that's that's what I All wanted to point production. out there. Oh yeah, hail production. <laughs> hail Pushing production. in though, Can Atlas is gonna him. get that entry into the map, but they still have a lot of ground still to be found and already halfway through this one. Well, have you noticed this ninja push from Hawkeye Community College? So many players just alt walking their way through this site. Someone crawled in through Sunrise Bar. They got pressure onto kitchen door they've got a kill on top of cool vibe skippy taken off the board the most impactful member in the lobby he has found his way into sight through the window he's uh, a little loud and he doesn't have any support being put down for him lobster does find kills though oh no a team kill coming out and snakes finds one but he's quickly refragged out by lobster who has just been holding on the trigger with his vector right there there's two players left on either team and a flurry of kills after that attempted plant. 2v2. Plant is down. The semi is in a good position to catch him unawares from behind. You see TSS on that Aldo was able to help out and get some of those. Listen, well, they have a lot of work to do in about 15 seconds to do it. The LMI is going to be thrown out. They can't stop it. Lobster, though, does find TSS, so it's all up to semi. They've been having a really good game so far. They down Lobster. 1v1 situation. That's going to be the evil eye giving that information that Atlas is planting. So the 1v1 essentially with the down player. The post plant situation 1v1. Who can win it out? The swing's going to come through. Semi trying to just body peek, but it can't do it. Atlas able to win this 1v1 for his team. And Hawkeye able to salvage the last round of the half. The, the, the ninja plant worked somehow. Pete didn't survive to see its fruition, but he sowed the seeds for a Hawkeye's round right there. Um... What a curious, curious thing. We saw a great clutch just a moment ago from Semi, but this time with all of the information on his hands, he knows exactly where the play is going down. A teammate on the Maestro Kim giving live pings, and he, he he slowed down, shot the down teammate, and didn't round the corner in time to catch uh, his opponent on the plant. He, it's so sad to see a round go by the wayside to, like, just that fraction of a second being missed, unfortunately. Hawkeyes have, or Hawkeye Community College has moved their way up to that 4 2. They were staring in the barrel of a potential 5 1 half to start off with after just being trampled by Skippy on so many rounds. But this is doable. They're definitely at a disadvantage having only one, two of those attacking rounds. But maybe there's going to be more defensive side of the map. And maybe they're going to really be really coming into their own on this round. I would say oftentimes you would think that this is an attacker side of the map. Yes, but it's not unheard of to see defender sided coastlines, even pro play. And this map hasn't changed that much. So, you know, sometimes you'll even see really defender sided coastlines. And that and that's just strange sometimes to us because it's not often, but it does happen. So I want to keep that open mind. Don't shut them out yet in your mind. Yes, it's... Uh, traditionally going to be a disadvantage the situation they find themselves in but we'll see if they're able to actually show us that defense is just the game here on this coastline matchup pushing through there's not going to be any peaks out from the side of hawkeye like we had seen from brian bulldogs as skippy was very aggressive on that role of defense but this time they're gonna be a little more conservative and we do see a lot of pushes coming through the ruins um we're gonna be seeing an iq being brought i just want to point that out not a operator that's often brought on attack especially on a map like this where you know the valk is banned so it's questionable how useful that will be but it is feeding information we see they're actually using the gadget i get annoyed a lot of the time at some iq players because they don't use the gadget properly but here they're actually going to be jumping on that gadget right away pinging out for their teammates yeah, that's going to be some useful things to use here, but unfortunately, there's not going to be a lot they can do about these mute jammers that he is spotting out um, immediately. Uh, the real utility of the IQ is going to be locating the 
echo drones in this lineup between both these teams because wagons is going to be able to be so impactful with those if he's able to survive and keep both those drones alive until the late game where bulldogs have been really flourishing so far in this match no picks yet as we pass the first minute of the round no players in hookah with a clash just watching over there another player uh, interesting pick that we haven't really talked about yet so hawkeye community college having someone just keeping constant eyes on the hookah maybe not a gun active but if they find a player they can coordinate with their teammates to find a kill Skippy, getting that opening kill. We've talked about them a lot in this matchup. They've had such an impact when it comes to the frags as well. They've gotten a lot of kills up to nine already, and this is just round seven, so doing really well. But they have a lot more to do here. It's only a minute remains. They need to start actually pushing in. You saw that there is a bulletproof and an echo drone as well, just launching this avenue that they're trying to push in as their main push. But things are... Uh, set up to be failure for them if they only do a one-sided push there's that clash like you mentioned i haven't talked about it a lot but they don't necessarily have the gadgets to get rid of it they're gonna have to use some nades or get a shot from behind otherwise they don't have anything they really can cuss that player and make it so their shield moves to the side like a zofia so that's something that they have to be aware of i don't know if they have done the drone work to find that player though they see the one my disc is still in play and they had pinged it out earlier they just didn't clear it so that's gonna be wasted utility there 25 seconds remaining and there's a five piece four so still man advantage but looking pretty dire as they don't have any other avenues of pushing atlas gonna trade with cheesy so that's gonna leave the man advantage for bryant for a moment and they're actually gonna find a second one to add on to it no now it's a 2v4 the peak coming up from pete onto snakes that's gonna get them the kill a plant going through though as five seconds remaining the peak out isn't gonna get the kill though pete gets shut down and now it is all up to the clash in a 1v3 situation they're gonna turn around but tss can get that kill and Bryant Bulldogs win their first round of attack. Bryant showing that they can get right back on that winning streak. They lost the last round, but now they've got this one, their first round on attack in the pocket. I was a little bit worried seeing that three player a stack right outside Aqua, especially without any pressure downstairs in office. That's what I really would have loved to see, especially with those frag grenades being able to be brought below and just remove players from in sight. I mean, you know, someone's all. Um, almost always going to be behind pink bar especially with a little bit of drone work you've got the knowledge they knew every piece of gadgetry from aqua into billiards but they didn't really get the information on players as much with the drones and that was just free value that they could have gotten and at least made it really safe to push up into aqua unfortunately for the defense that flank from wagons on the echo didn't quite turn out and that's bulldogs doing their due diligence keeping someone on the flank watch and making sure that that investment of three players is not going to go to waste well the other unfortunate part is that it seemed like hazard bear got a little too aggressive you saw that they were playing over top of white and looking through that window onto the aqua balcony and yet they get picked off because they're just too aggressive trying to get those players outside of there. That was a key position because you can either peek them as they're trying to push into the aqua door or even just play a little more passive and just hold an angle through luggage and try and get them there. Either way, there's a power position that was given up early due to the opening pick being on that Jaeger. So something to watch out for as well is that opening kills have been pretty impactful throughout this. When Hawkeye's got an opening kill, it hasn't always gone their way. But those two rounds that they won certainly were two where they got that opening kill. So it's certainly important for them to get that opening pick. But even last time they didn't get it. And look what happens. Bulldogs are able to rush all over them. So something to look at in the following rounds to see if they can get a little bit better at getting those opening engagements to go their way. HCC is bringing a similar lineup this round. They're keeping the clash round. No more echo this time. Uh, but they do have plenty of roaming. They've got that constant intel coming from lobster so hopefully this time uh, his teammate will be able to play off of him a little more effectively but there are constant drones on the two of them the clash mentioned it before and it's being brought again but this time i think they're utilizing it a little bit better as it is going to be at that focal point of the push and last time they didn't even engage with any of the attackers until what seemed like very late in the round skippy though gonna get that opening kill again and it's wagons this time things are already looking a little dire as they're giving up ground quickly only a minute into the round the twitch is also going through with the drone and just clearing so much of this utility the bulletproof cleared out a little earlier that's not going to help them anymore skippy finding a second one onto atlas things are looking dire for hawkeye already we're not even halfway through the round 
That's the flank potential gone off the board for Hawkeye Community College. They're going to have to really rely on Lobster continuing to burn out more and more time. A drone might have just seen Hazard Bear there on Cool Vibe Stairs. I imagine Bulldog are expecting to have a player up there that they have to clear out. It's just a matter of finding another angle that they can push from. And that's what Cheesy's job here is going to be. I don't know if he has the intel to be working on, but it's actually going to be pretty safe to push in through service entrance. Snakes finds P making it a one or five V two. Oh no, leaving Lobster all on his own as Skippy finds yet another kill. Snakes finishing off as well. And it's a flawless round this time on the attack for Brian Bulldogs. Well, we questioned if it would be a defensive coastline and the comeback would happen for the Hawkeyes, but thus far it is not the case. Bryant looking strong still after switching over to the attack. Two rounds in a row for them and one more round and map one will be in their favor. Already picked on to the map count and we'll be moving on to cafe map number two. So Hawkeye, now they're on their back foot on this map. They cannot afford any more mistakes or errors as they're one round away from losing this map and they need four to bring it to overtime. Yeah, that's a, that's a tough cookie to chew. I don't know if that's an actual saying, but but I definitely say that now. this one is. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to double down on this. This this cookie, it's a, it's like an oatmeal cookie, and it's got like the, the steel-cut oats. You know, it's, it's, it's going to be a chunky one for them to get through. It's going to be hard to win this coastline map. Uh, there's been some – the constant pressure from Brian Bulldogs. They're doing a really good job of coordinating their attacks and coordinating their intel. That's something that really helps for dealing with the Clash. That's why we see Clash really be successful in ranked play and a lot less successful in competitive play. There's a reason we see her ban a lot less uh, like in a league like this than you might if you're just solo queuing and ranked a lot because if you're able to coordinate really well, it's super easy to shut her down. The fence now going to uh, bombs that we have not seen thus far, and that is going to be the blue bar and sunrise bar hold. It's an interesting one, and it's pretty hard, especially without the mirror. This is oftentimes the bomb site where you would see a mirror being used. Try and watch an oversight into the blue bars. That's oftentimes going to be where the attack is going to push in through. Get that wall behind the bar opened up, plant behind the bar. Well, that might be a little easier for the attackers now. They're already going to be getting on the outside of the blue window and did some damage onto Lobster. Half their HP is already going to be nicked off as they are already being aggressed upon. These attacking uh, rounds from Bryant has been super aggro early on, and it has paid dividends. Yeah, they really want to find kill after kill after kill, just like they did last round. But it's going to be hard to find any even gunfights this round. Hawkeye Community College has really invested into the utility sync setup. Every single operator is going to bring some utility that needs explosive gadgets to deal with or grenade denial. There's not a huge, huge number of throwables, especially if we see that IQ being brought. Nook does bring a couple frag grenades, but she's not got the same options as, say, a Zofia would for dealing with these. So Bulldogs might be a little bit behind in that utility game. So it's going to be all about finding angles and choosing their battles. This is a questionable decision from Hawkeye, giving up office. Wagons is here in security, able to just flank at any moment. But that's going to be watched, I'm certain, by Bryant, unless they're making an error. And it's also a castle barricade between them, so that actually helps the attackers. Now they have this area completely in their control. They only have to watch a hatch. That's actually going to help them out. They can open up the wall and get a plant pretty easily now, as long as they have some form of hard breach. And that is going to be the Maverick. So they're going to have to have them designated to rotate over and help support this push. But if they can get it, they have the oversight from the window. This could be an easy plant. I really need to see wagons making some impact here. Uh, it might be just a, a late flank through office using that one punch on the barricade that Aruni can bring to the table, but it's a really scary two-pronged push that we're seeing coming out. Blue bar fully seated to the attacker. Skippy getting the first kill and a second. He's going to have one of his teammates removed as well. And two right there. Another couple kills from the Bulldogs though leaves wagons all alone in the 1v3 without even a good rotation back to site. Unfortunately, it's going to be almost impossible to deal with, especially with that tiny magazine that the P10 Roni is going to bring to bear. Bryant has plenty of time to sit, find the angles that they want best, set up some intel. They've got the drones, they've got a claymore, and they've got nades. They can just start throwing out utility and just denying so much space with only 30 seconds left. There's one of the Aruni gates off, and I don't think they're going to know that Wagons is here quite yet. He's got to sneak in. 
Was that oh, a that hip was fire kill right there on the I think headshot? that's a, a observing uh I think that's an observing bug if I had to guess. That didn't seem quite accurate, but yeah, either looks way like the, the radio might have uh, <laughs> lagged out for just a moment there. That's an unfortunate way for that last round to end, I think. I mean a, a, a weird funky little gunfight, a little gem for us to get to see for a second. But the Bulldogs very dominant throughout the map and absolutely in that last round, securing their seven two win on coastline well hawkeye after that they're gonna need some dental work because that cookie ended up being a jawbreaker as they were not able to chew on it whatsoever they're My done and dusted right there yes indeed a delicious flavor of jawbreaker is new it's the chocolate chip cookie don't chew on it though you might <laughs> need dental work in any case that is map one finished off as you just saw Bryant Bulldogs winning map one. We'll go on to cafe in just a moment, but first a short break to allow these players to get ready and set up for that map too. So we'll be right back with you.
All right, we are back. We're continuing our match oh, with the first map down between Bryant uh, Bulldogs and Hawkeye Community College. These two sparred it out in our first map on Coastline, 7-2 in favor of Bryant Bulldogs, laying down a blistering, especially first half of that map. So we're going to be continuing with Cafe. I'm still Treasure. I'm still joined by Wielku. Of course, yeah. Dominant win, though, from Bryant Bulldogs, 7-2. Seemed kind of close in the middle of the game. The first few rounds didn't go Hawkeye's way. They get those two rounds at the end of the half. They get up to 4-2. And then from there on out, weren't able to do anything on their defense here, though. They're going to start an attack. And this is certainly a map where you have a hard time arguing that it's not defender-sided, right? So they're going to be in a hard situation after losing map one. Now they start on the more disadvantaged side. We'll see what they're able to scrounge up. Bands coming through. Thatch, of course, going to be the first one. Not surprising at all. But... Outside of that, you know, I guess there are a few different options for the other bands. Yeah, not surprising at all right there. He gives so much value, especially on the primary sites on first floor in the kitchen. He is great for opening a bakery side wall, freezer side wall on the opposite side of site. And of course, on the third floor, especially red stairs wall is so pivotal for opening up into piano room and removing players from the corner by bathroom. And that can save so much time. Otherwise, they're going to be relying on some more conventional stuff like a Maverick, a Hibana, or maybe just uh, shooting out those gadgets and clearing out piano room in a more traditional way with uh, guns and drums. This is true. I think with the Cade band, it allows you to not worry about hatch when you go to the attack the basement hold. And then, of course, the walls have to be used with bandits or the mutes. And so you can shoot them off from the skylight even, or if they're defending red wall with that kind of stuff, you can get on the window repel or go from below. So I think that that's a great uh, ban for the attacking side of Hawkeyes. The other thing that they banned though, that I wanted to highlight was Finca and guess who played it? Finca a lot in the last map. You guessed it. Skippy who dropped it. I believe we were told 18 kills, 17 after the rehost. So you might have saw 17, but they did get a kill before the rehost. So total of 18 kills and just three deaths. So a 6.0 KD, pretty nuts on map one. Very dominant. For, for those of you counting at home, that's a lot. <laughs> obviously very influential on that uh, map's outcome. Yeah, so he's going to be looking to be back on that Rome game where he really flourished, playing a vigil right off the bat. He's great for that vertical nature of Cafe, since a lot of times it's going to be just... Uh, it's, it's the default way of clearing out this map, and typically the best is going to be clearing from the top down you check out the third floor it's a big donut you check that all out you check out pretty similarly on the second floor and then once you know that there aren't any roamers upstairs then you can start pinching onto the site while your heart support have been doing their job of opening up one of the walls at least between kitchen uh the kitchen and bakery and the freezer right here where we're seeing so that's going to be what we're most likely going to be seeing as the attack for this site, but it's going to be hard to get through that first phase clearing our room if we've got a player like Skippy that's going to be invisible to drums. Exactly. Now, it does give away his position using that gadget in a certain sense of, like, in this area, roughly, is this player of Vigil, but, as you said, technically invisible from the visuals, so you won't see them, but you'll hear the sound and see the indicator saying that they are near there, so it's still kind of a trade-off, right? Is it worth giving your position roughly away, or is it worth it to not have their exact position being pinged by these drones, right? So, but especially if you're solo roaming, that's when Vigil's really useful, because then, you know, you, you don't have to, uh, you don't have a player who can refrag you, so you're kind of on your own. We're gonna see the push in over by the bottom of brown stairs on that window there and that's going to allow them to have a lot of ground right off the bat i don't know if anyone's playing whiskey but typically you would see someone there so interestingly they're not going to be positioned in that area on the side of brian bulldogs so that's interesting uh grenade over the top is going to catch cheesy opening kill going in the way of hawkeyes that's something that we didn't see too much atlas finds semi above too that's the bandit off the board so a 5-3 now hawkeye only a minute into the round looking a lot better than the last minute that's gonna be hugely impactful there's still two or there's still one player up on the roam that is skippy since semi has been taken out uh so judiciously but there's still two players on site uh the ones that have active uh abilities are still up 
So those are two of the more expendable players of the Bulldogs defense, but Bulldogs are going to have to hold steady on their angles. And it looks like Skippy has actually been found out a little bit. The ability of the Jackal Atlas to follow those footsteps is pivotal. He's picked up a second kill after removing Semi, and now they're going to be able to focus on the site itself. Vertical pressure is going to start coming out. We've got that Heartbridge gadget. It doesn't open up a huge hole, but that in addition with the zero cams is going to make it very easy to clear out tss but atlas on a 3k so far removing snakes as well from the other side of sight tss has to use that all the to try and make as much of a difference with his gun as possible but lobster is there for the refrag immediately and this was and i think this makes it clear that this is the map choice of hawkeye community college they look so comfortable in that round a lot more comfortable here than they did on the last map for sure the coordination looked a lot better too. We saw a little bit of struggles coming through. They're able to get opening kills, but they weren't able to get right into a round win, but we saw them follow it up continuously one after another, the bodies falling by the wayside. Brian looked like they were the ones who looked a little more uncomfortable on this map so far. We see them shift the bomb site upstairs now as they had just lost down below pretty handedly. They're gonna try their hand at a new bomb site to try and have that mystery element help them out and get their first round. Lots of cams on this defense. The Valkyrie is really strong. We saw her band out on the last map, and she is a little bit stronger on Coastline than Cafe, but Cafe is also a really good Valkyrie map. Not that there's a bad Valkyrie map. Uh, she's currently the most banned uh, operator in just about any notable leap on the defense, followed pretty closely by the Mira that's uh, banned this time since she can really lock down the third floor, uh, especially on this objective. But in addition on the cams, TSS once again on the Maestro and Amazi from Snakes. So that's a lot of potential intel. Hopefully it's not going to be leaving them for want of maybe more shields or any other sort of utility dump. Or even if you look at the Ubisoft notes that they release, you know, they show the uh, wind deltas of the different operators, but they also so show the ban rates, and these are usually for plat or above, so it is higher level uh, players who are playing ranked. Even in ranked, basically, is what I'm saying. Valk is still the most banned op, so as you mentioned, very powerful operator, but not just in comp, but then in anything. Even players recognize it in ranked, which are a completely different breed of player, we'll say. Honestly, I, I think like she's way fact... stronger in, uh, in ranked, too, because so many players in ranked are more, uh, dis like, they're, they're not playing with their team, so you're going to see a lot more players just running out, and it's hard to find where they're going to be coming from, especially if they have all the intel. So crazy as power as crazy powerful as she is in competitive, I think she's even stronger when you're queuing ranked. True. I mean, you can gather that information, and even if you have teammates who don't talk, they can at least ping for you. So more cams, yeah. the better, right? You see that on the rappel, though, they're trying to get some pressure, and there is a player here on the backside of the bar, and you can get shot from this window that the, uh, I believe, Zero of Wagons is playing on. you got to be careful, though, but they're going to dip out of there into Cigar and get away with their life, actually, and that's uh, really surprising that they weren't caught out there. Yeah, Semi's playing some dangerous positions all the way up there on the miniature bar in Piano Window is a pretty risky spot. And this one still is with players coming up through red stairs or even just on the window where we do see one of Hawkeye Community College's players. Um, some pretty forward positions we see with Skippy as well, watching Skylight and uh, the hatch on uh, the new hatch. So these are some some dangerous positions, but they could be a very beneficial risk if Hawk, uh, if Pull dogs find kills off of those positions. I think Hawkeye is trying to get some pressure from below, and they can see those ADSs taking them out for free. And some shots coming back, but Atlas already dipped out of there. She's looking down towards the pillar area and even below the new hatch drop, but nothing is down there, so not going to find anything for their trouble. Pete, you just saw a switch from a Jaeger to a Sledge, and both of them rocking the G2 skins on their guns, so I respect that a lot. You know, I'm an OG Penta G2 <laughs> fan myself, a Stan, if you would, so I love to see it. But no bodies being found here. It's just been all quiet on the Western Front, as these players have not yet engaged fully. But there we go. Hazard Bear going to get a kill on the semi to open things up, and so uh, Hawkeye yet again getting the opening kill. 
Yeah, you really hate to see it taking so long to get presence on the top of red stairs and opening up pixel right now, but there doesn't seem to be a player actually playing on bathroom. So this is going to be a pretty fast clear in the last 30 seconds from Hawkeye. Hopefully that time constraint isn't going to kill their chances at winning this round, though. They have to push out onto new uh, balcony pretty fast here, but it's Hazard Bear who comes out once again on top. Skippy gets one to his name, though the attack is still a player ahead as they have to push up with time on the wayside. No time remaining. Five seconds it's ticking down to Cheesy getting a kill. Snake's falling it up onto Hazard, and now things are falling apart for Hawkeye. Wagons can get one. He can get two, but he can't get the third and final man of Bryant Bulldogs. They went on time. I don't really have complaints about the attack from Hawkeye College other than time, and time is going to be so essential. They get the opening pick. They get opening pressure. It's not even a bad push onto site, but it needed to happen. 30 seconds sooner, unfortunately, for a plant to even get down. And they're still having to take some 50-50 gunfights there. After Hazard Bear went down, I think it was... Um, ooh, I think it was Wagons, if I remember correctly, that had to push into Freezer without any intel to work on. And that's just going to give the round away to the Bulldogs. We need some earlier pressure on Piano as well to really secure a bulkhead for Hawkeye Community College to push into sight. Indeed, just a little too little too late as the sixth man, so to speak, of time came in and saved the fifth and final remaining body. And that's enough to win. That's what it comes down to, right? Objective play. You can do it on attack and get the plant. You can also do it on defense and just buy the time needed so that they cannot get the plant down. They can't find all the bodies they need to win. So Hawkeye, while they had a good round going for them and certainly showed potential of winning that round, showed that they can win gunfights in dying moments as well, which is something you really like to see in teams. That's that's one of the big difference makers in the top tier teams, right? So even if they're doing a last second push, they can get those kills. They're able to do it there, but just not able to get enough of those kills. We're gonna go even on the scoreboard and go back downstairs. This is the site that Hawkeye won pretty handedly. What can Bulldogs do here to throw them off? Well, they're going to have to play ahead of the attack. I think it's been a bit of a passive roam the last couple rounds, and Hawkeye Community College has seen right through it. They know the tricks on Cafe. This is the map that they wanted to be on. So uh, players like Skippy not being able to make the same impact, or Semi, both of them going negative right now, just not finding the openings that are actually going to pay off for the flanks that they're setting up. Well, time is going to a little bit further but it's still early in this one you see a lot of bodies lined up outside of the white area and that's interesting last time they went for a more vertical take and we did push in by the window by brown which is where this ella is going to be laying down nearby but they're not pushing there this time they've decided to go for a different avenue which is the white stairs area and garage but simmy can be trying to just bide time and maybe get a cheeky uh rat position we'll say as they are going to be trying to catch someone unawares, but the body is being pinged out. The teammate's going to be trying to help Pete. They're going to start swinging out and miss all the shots. Semi going to take a lot of damage and returned none of it. That was an unfortunate spray of bullets there, but they're still alive, and that's what really matters. Yeah, the Scorpion is going to be hard to control in situations like that. I was a little bit worried seeing Pete, I think, playing off of Intel, uh, like without Intel for a little bit before he was able to get those yellow pings that we saw. And those are really what made the difference. They've got, they now have enough pressure that they can open up the freezer wall. They've got info from the freezer hatch as well as Atlas has been clearing upstairs. They get a pick as well to even up the player count, but Semi is still going to be waiting on long bar, trying to find an opportunity here as Pete continues this gunfight, finally taking some damage himself but he can't find the head so that was a grenade in pocket could utilize it here to try and clear out this player they're going to retreat back towards site and they're going to re-peek out and go back into site they are just playing a peekaboo game here but they're going to get a kill for their trouble lobster taken out by Sam, who's going all over this bomb site and outside of it just trying to be a menace snakes on the smg 11 finds hazard bear and now atlas and pete have to find something to make this round worth it it's atlas getting that kill but instantly refragged by cheesy and we see pete in freezer get peeked by snakes smg 11 in hand finds that kill bryant bulldogs win another round well unfortunately we don't get to see uh, that stunning conclusion to the 
to Pete's gunfight, he's going to get gunned down in Freezer. There is nice to see Hawkeye Community College really find some extensive white side pressure with the vertical uh, roam clear as well from Atlas, which he's been really excelling at. I think that's the golden star of the Hawkeye attack right now, but it's not quite enough if they're going to be losing these gunfights, uh, pushing up against players that have really strong angles. That's the nades. Just like you mentioned, Pete had that nade, would have been a phenomenal resource to use if they just droned out the player on long bar, toss a nade in, bam, they don't have to worry about the potential of that double kill from Semi. They don't even necessarily need the drone, they had just engaged in the gunfight where neither player got the kill. I mean, you know that they're there, and even if they're not there anymore, that grenade can still do damage through the soft wall. It wasn't reinforced on that wall next to uh, Whiskey there, the bar. And if they had played on the other side in the double door in your sight, that still could have damaged them at the very least. But the main thing is it would have pushed them out if they had been in the back, either getting the kill or forcing them to jump up so you can shoot them. Otherwise, you don't get anything because they're not there, and that allows you to still have information. So no matter what, really, throwing the grenade there would have been probably the better play for Pete. Just unfortunately, probably didn't have it in their mind as they were just frantically trying to shoot that player with their gun. Either way, now that's the two in a row for Bulldogs. So Brian's going to have to find another site, and this is it here for them. I think this is going to be that fireplace library hold, a classic one, but certainly they have to hold upstairs. That's why you see all these bodies up here. Yeah, the vertical pressure once again is a huge figuring factor into this objective. So uh, from a, up top, especially, it's very easy to get pressure and uh, sight lines, especially on where you're going to be planting from above. So Bulldogs are definitely going to be wanting to hold that ground for as long as possible and hopefully even still have someone up top if a plant does go down because oh. you can very easily cover that whole area with the overwatch through a hole in the floor. So many orange bodies outside of this door, and they could just rush in to the library from this position. That's what I thought they were thinking about doing, which could have actually been decent, because there doesn't seem to be very good vertical holes made by the defenders to look down into sight. And there's only one body in sight of library. So if they do decide to push in here, it could actually pay off, depending. I can't see everything, but just judging by from what I'm saying, they don't really have any vertical holes here on the defense to look down into sight. Yeah, and it looks like Skippy isn't even going to be able to make some if he needed to. He doesn't have impact grenades available anymore, but Bryant is going to hold up on site, getting a kill for his team as Semi has been mobilized to find the shots from above. He finds another as well, finding a better angle for the uh, shot right there. Hazard Bear left as the only member of his team. He does find Cheesy as he pushes up through that rotational, but there's three faces and plenty of cameras still available. Ooh, when the intel from the Legion is going to get him, there Snake's moving up on the intel. They did what I thought they would, which is the rush push in, but they didn't really do it super well. They didn't drone and find that player in sight, so they just went for it without the information they needed. The Ying wasn't thrown deep enough, so it didn't flash that player either. And then they got pushed from the pill area, so there's no one on Overwatch trying to protect them. We did see one player trying to do it, but they just missed the shots, and I think that might have been Hazard Bear. Either way, they get the kill too little too late over there underneath the new hatch belk down below into mining but either way it didn't pay off right we, we wanted to see that push come in and just be executed a little bit better and i think they actually could have had something there but unfortunately it was just botched and well that's three in a row now so we're going to see the same site that they started this win streak which is upstairs for brian bulldogs and hawkeye after a really red hot start handed win on the downstairs bomb site when they were attacked they has, haven't been able to get it done we haven't seen quite the same execution throughout the round since round one. Quite unfortunate, because that's what I'm all here for. Uh, we see that proficiency from Hawkeye Community College, but it's a uh, little gaps in communication or just single fights executed imperfectly. And Bryant has continued to jump on every little spot of weakness that Hawkeye Community College gives them, definitely throughout map one, and that's continuing throughout this cafe map as well. It's going to come down to having some more consistent intel on the drones. Uh, I think that positioning of Atlas in the first couple rounds has did so much for Hawkeye Community College, and we just didn't quite see that last round. He's going the buck again, so I'm all... Uh, a little reserved to see what he can get from it since we didn't see any value before. 
snakes. That's like a little bit late of a peek out. I mean, it's only 15 seconds. I mean, usually you see it a little earlier than that. The pistol is going to be the thing to open up the window there. It's a little interesting, but Argus can give you a shout out. And so there's a player right next to it on stage, and they're just ready and waiting to just eat that utility up, take it out, and then bail, which is exactly what we've seen so far. And they don't want to contest it. You notice that also Bandit is bringing barbed wire, so that's an interesting thing you don't see super often, but usually Jaeger's the one to bring that. They didn't bring a Jaeger this time, and also Skippy bringing barbed wire, but he didn't put him down yet, so that's interesting as well. I, you don't see that much barbed wire brought from teams. Yeah, it's interesting. That might just be a time constraint, not getting everything quite set up in time, and Skippy trying to find uh, his position to be roaming. Those zero cams are finding their opportunity to get used here, getting intel well across this site atlas is looking for some intel to work on from below but really he should just be starting to blast away this is an, a, a location that there's just always going to be a player on so at the very least you're going to force him out or best case you might shoot out his feet and there we go finally taking that mark he waited for the intel and got plenty of damage for it so that's a huge boon he might not know that he's got it but that's great because a player can't play in that position anymore only concern is if you've seen Atlas get flanked from behind by a player. Looking at it, though, that won't happen here. Every single body is upstairs on the top floor. There's no roaming below here. So, Brian, they're okay just letting it go. You can have that control. You can even buck us from below. We don't care. You have to get on site eventually. That's a C4 coming through, but not going to land the kill wagons. A lot of damage done, but still alive. Going to be continuing to persist on that heaven window. Everything is just kind of quiet, though. Just a little bit of engagement, tits for tats here, and the damages. That's going to be the finally that opening kill for Skippy, but instant refrag on the semi from Hazard Bear. Skippy had a huge game last map. So far, a little quieter here. We'll see if they can start lighting it up, though. They got their first kill here in this round. Uh, second one on the on the match. I like the Hawkeye Community College has done a good job of setting up crossfires. We saw that really punishing Semi once he tried to uh, play a little bit more aggressively since Hawkeye Community College is just ready for it. Wagons pushes up trying to make the move and get the execute starting to happen for the team. But Skippy is there and ready to take him down with his T5. Uh, Lobster on the other side also pushing up another oh, forward position. But Skippy just wins the gunfight. This is going to be so pivotal. He's got the movement as well to get wherever he needs to find these last two players. He's got his anchors not totally out of position at this point, and TSS is the one who's going to finish off another round for the team. We finally get to see Skippy coming online. Yeah, I think a 3K in that round, finding him in all sorts of positions on that. Uh, wow, why am I blanking on his name? What is that operator called? Please help me out, Trish. I am just having a brain uh, fart right lesion? now. Oryx. Right? Or oh, Rx. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Oh, uh, man. I was like blanking <laughs> on his name because you don't see him very often. I'm like, but he yeah, is. No, my, my mind useful. was like, yeah, T5 SMG. That's the lesion. But I was just staring at Norix thinking about how he could hop up <laughs> through the hatches. That's so funny. No, like, I oh. think that's a real testament to how little we see Oryx used in the competitive setting. It's nice to see him getting utilized that way, right? Yeah, he's, I mean, he has the dash. He's able to move around. We saw him utilized in that way, running around all over. And yet, I think the barber is still in his pocket, too. So Skippy just didn't even need to use the extra utility. I just need this gun in my hand, and everything will be A-OK. -okay. And well, that It's the juke. They think I'm going to put down barbed wire? No, no barbed wire. So you, you got to live in their head like that. Indeed. Living in the heads for free at this point because you have to think Hawkeye, they were in this position last map. They won the last round before the switch over, which they could certainly do here, right? They already won this bomb site once, so they could definitely win it here, but that also still puts them at a, only a 4-2. Now, the this, uh, difference between this map and last map was last time they went to defense on a map that isn't really favoring defense. This time they'll be switching defense on a map that does favor defense. So even if they only get 4-2 split here, it's not too bad. That's actually pretty normal on a cafe. Yeah, they're going to be hinging on this round a little bit. Uh, going back to last round real quick, actually, the Hawkeye Community College push. Uh, like I said, there were some really nice crossfires that should have paid off really well. Unfortunately... Um, like the only one of them that I saw not succeed was Lobster just not being able to find the head on the player in bathroom. But otherwise, the execution of angles looked so nice, but it's one of those that came down to time again. They just needed another 30 seconds before the execute, and they started getting a little panicky and had to kind of run into sight and just look to find gunfights. 
There was one player who could have found Skippy in their default plant near that new hatch drop, which is kind of where we're looking even, but they just missed the shots over towards Pixels, so Skippy able to get that third kill, I think, on that player because they just missed out on the kill, so that's unfortunate, but it happens. Looking into this round, they have those Valkams to feed information, but I don't think anyone's actually playing above this time like we had seen previously from Bryant. They aren't going to be allegating too many bodies up above this time. Now they just want to do an anchor hold and see if that pays off a little bit better. Uh, at the time they were on this, they had Semi, though, doing a lot of running around on the LL, which got a lot of kills and netted them really the round. And Playing down below again near the bottom of Brown, they're in a similar position. They can rotate over towards the Whiskey area yet again, play that position. So the Hawkeye players have to recognize that. They have to know that this is a player who hurt them a lot last time they went to this attack and maybe even lost them the round because how many bodies they lost to it so they have to be aware that player's position and find a solution but she's going to get the opening kill on to pete with the c4 from below so hawkeye is hurting a little bit here to open things up and that's the sledge too he got a couple hits on the floor right there but what they've been really excelling at Closing down rotations, they're not going to get that mileage out of Sledge, which he can really just uh, pump out those holes in the floor, which really help out. TSS once again going down first here, and Semi, a player who had huge impact last time on the first floor objective, not really getting any action quite yet. No time to waste. 4-4, four, four, 45 seconds, and well, now a 3-4 is had her takes out Semi, so that's the player who was persisting last time. Now not going to be in this round, so certainly going to help them out a lot. They have a man advantage, but not a lot of time. That six man of time again coming into play potentially here. They're seeing that the air jab will be placed down, so they're going to have to get rid of that if they want to do a flank. The drone's coming through. They know they have just a little bit of time to peek. Not wise as Hazard Bear was just holding that angle. Snake's taken out. Now it's a 4v2, a lot more doable for the attackers, but Skippy has something to say about it. He gets shut down, Atlas, and Hazard Bear able to clean up those last two bodies and find Hawkeye a second round. Well, it looks like history is repeating itself here. Hawkeye Community College once again finding those two rounds on the first half and specifically the last round of the first half. Both were on Kitchen there. So that's uh, it's going to say a couple things here. One, there's that perseverance of Hawkeye Community College. They're going to be down a bit, but they're not out at all. They're still giving it their all. And they've got a clean attack on Kitchen. We, that's the best stuff that we've seen from them. But that is a little bit of a worry that the other objectives, especially the third floor site, which is one of the most played sites on this map, just doesn't have that same execution on their attack. It's also interesting because that site actually was like out of favor for a long time. Like teams actually avoided upstairs. Do you remember that? Not that long ago, yeah. maybe like half a year ago. That was like the bomb site to avoid. People preferred yeah. mining. Yeah, that, that's one of those one exciting <laughs> objectives where the, the community is so back and forth, like uh, today we hate it tomorrow we're gonna love it i always well, also love meta changes it's so such a fun <laughs> objective yeah yeah i mean especially if you look at uh pixel which is that little corner right by the bathroom on third floor which is where a lot of big fights will happen and that's gonna change depending on how strong shields are and how strong projectiles are indeed and right now it's questionable where we are at attackers have a lot of utility we've seen if you watch SI, which is the pro play for this game with Rainbow Six Siege, that showed us just how powerful grenades are. Nades got so many bodies, more than I think I've ever seen in any meta in the past. It was just insane how many bodies were found from grenades just being thrown, either from below and getting you through the floor, or even just catching you off of a bounce on a doorway or such. So I do think it doesn't necessarily Advan it's not necessarily an advantage for these defenders, and so that's why you don't see Pixel played in this meta that we are currently finding ourselves in. But the anchor above seems to be the play now as Hawkeye are going to go on their first round of defense, and they're going to go top floor as well. They couldn't defeat it, so they're trying to throw Bryant a little bit taste of their own medicine. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, pressure here over by Piano Room. Not only is there a player on Pixel, but there's another one playing in the bathroom trying to hold an angle and uh, just out gunfight. I think that's P with MP5K, which is a gun that'll just spit out bullets. And with that 1.5 sight, it's going to be pretty strong with that. Dealing with drones is also going to be so valuable because the intel is really good for making sure that the execute can actually go down. Hawkeye Community College are doing a good job of getting those off the board. 
Player and Pixel still going to be here, but they're just clearing out and going below even to try and get some ground gained before they start trying to take out these players, I believe. I'm not sure exactly if this will be the primary execute, as is normal, but Brian seemed content to just take their time here, gather as much information as possible before they decide to commit to anything. That's at least what my eyes are telling me. Semi, and we have that repel over on the piano windows as well, just trying to make sure that the things are clear and they can start pushing in. We see Skippy below might be able to get some utility cleared, but not a bunch as they only have two of those impact charges that Ash carries and then a Claymore. So there's not so much that they can do, but at least they can start getting this wall taken care of. Yeah, that's looking like a bit of an ash moment. I think Skippy is looking to just solo clear out any roam presence on the second floor. Uh, ooh, a couple kills coming out for the defense here. Cheesy finds one, but he's immediately refragged out there by Atlas. Uh, finding the long angle with his SMG 11. And despite having red wall open, Bulldogs still have yet to capitalize on it at all with 45 seconds left on the clock. They're going to have to start just moving on to site, leaving some angles to the wayside. As it bear on the pixel angle, going to do some damage to TSS. Snakes, though, with the nade. We talked about how powerful those are. There's one onto Atlas. Hazard Bear, though, in that pixel position, is going to capitalize a peek out from Lobster. Find Snakes now. It is all up to TSS, the hard support player here. Has a good gun, the AK in hand, but they're going to get caught unaware as Hazard Bear wrecking havoc over there in the pixel position. Hazard Bear has been just on the tip of my tongue constantly throughout this match as a player mostly on the ace on an attack playing a support role but finding kills uh, in the end of round at the beginning of round through the middle of round just pretty consistently finding that positive KD which is something that we mentioned earlier as well that it's super important to be finding impactful kills in the dying moments of a round and that's what Hazard Bear can consistently do. Moving on to the second bomb side, Hawkeye winning their first round of defense. One more. And if they can win this bomb side, they'll be evened up, and that would make them probably feel pretty good after being down for the majority of this matchup. A six pick coming out to pick up the bandit. They're gonna opt to drop the Jaeger from the lineup, but that is a okay. As we saw, the Wamai is still in play, so not as many projectile catchers, but maybe just enough for them to feel secure. They also have the castle to help them out. Semi has been having to deal with a Jackal player on his uh, defense side, so now he's going to be the one giving some heck to the roamers on the Jackal for his own team. The The Twitch is an interesting thing here. They're going to be really gunning to deal with some Valkyrie cams potentially, but definitely the Bandit batteries as well on the walls. That's probably going to be their main uh, avenue for doing that. If they lose out on Cheesy, the Sledge, who could otherwise open up the floor and make quick uh, quick removal of bandit batteries. I like the beepers being brought on the castle too. I think beepers, I used to think they were kind of useless, but that's because I was naive. You know, I didn't realize the value that they had brought and the beeping noises really are obnoxiously loud. So it certainly gives away the player's position pretty clearly to the defense. See, on cams right off the bat, is something you like to see. You see Lobster also going to be on about cams. So they're just kind of holding these angles, trying to figure out where's the push coming from so that we can navigate ourselves or at least direct our attention to those positions of these attackers atlas is going to be playing an extension into the bakery room that's what those castles and shield are brought for but the twitch drone this is exactly why twitch is so useful these days it clears out the utility yes sometimes flores drones can do a similar job but the twitch is so precise those things are just taken care of in short fashion now with the hard breach opening up the wall that player in the bakery is in for a load of hurt if they don't play this carefully Brian's doing a good job of dealing with the bakery extension already. There's castle barricades and everything, but they've allocated their resources pretty well to make it just an unplayable position. They don't get Atlas, but Atlas is forced all the way into prep room. Now he's got plenty of drones to his name, though, so that's a pretty successful extension, especially if he can keep holding this angle and keep the attention of the Bulldogs, who have dedicated three players to trying to push him out for the last minute of the time that we've spent here. We've got a uh, player pushed up at the bottom of brown stairs as well trying to find a uh, roamer hazard bear being really notable one just right above and that might potentially be a clash on brown stairs if we see one of them start getting antsy for a fight 
Could also be an epic flank, and as you can see, the drone's gonna catch that before it can even happen. So Hazard Bear, a good effort to get the flank going to help his team out, but not able to do so. Kit Skippy getting that kill on to Pete. That's an opening kill going in the favor of Brian Bulldogs now, and they have only a minute to play with, but that's a decent amount of time. Atlas gonna get that kill on to Snakes to even things up, but the swing coming through as TSS gets that refrag. Knew the player was kind of pinched in the corner there. Skippy finding Hazard Bear, that was the roamer taken care of. Now it's only Lobster and Wagons on the bomb site. A swing coming through, getting rid of the Castle Barricade is gonna allow them to have a little bit more room for avenueing into sight. Skippy aware of Wagons' position, gets a triple kill on the round. It's all up to Lobster and Sink and Semi can find them. Bryant's finding their first round of attack, I believe. Yeah, yet another skippy round, I would say, and I, I will designate them as such. These are one of the multitude of 3K plus rounds from Skippy. We haven't quite found an A, so I guess they're 3K and 4K rounds, but that's going to bring them back. There's two rounds in a row for Hawkeye Community College, the best streak that they've been able to put together. And it was a good start to the round as well. They used their defensive utility quite well. Unfortunately, that Wamai was eventually forced out into a position where he just could not continue to fight at all. And the smokes that he was set up with ended up kind of trapping him in a corner. That right off the back of the first frag going in the favor of the Bulldogs just started to cascade into a round that was less and less in their wheelhouse. Yeah, they... they fell prey to the problem of anchoring on site with one roamer, which is that you have bodies on site and they can open up angles on you, right? So if you didn't buy enough time, that's a problem. And then on top of it, your roamer that you're relying on, then it's not another body in sight. That means they need to have an effect elsewhere. The roamer isn't the one that bought time. That was all the player in bakeries. So what did the roamer do? Well, fortunately, they weren't able to do much of anything. And that's not necessarily a knock on Hazard Bear. Obviously, they tried their best, but that's the, the problem with having a single roamer. If you have a double roam, then you can hold some angles and have someone distract while the other player tries to push a different angle for the flank. But when you're by yourself like that and you get caught out, you're pretty much done. Your impact on the round could be sealed off if they're watching and waiting. And then they were able to get that kill on them as well. So that really did just spell disaster for the roam. Didn't work out for them. You see the Valkan being thrown out just to try and gather some information early in the round. Might even go for a peek out if they have the opportunity. Ooh, there's that cam work coming out. There's a couple players looking at that window. It is a bit suspicious of a window. It's the most popular one to be jumping out of. So I think Brian Bulldogs are going to be at least a little bit aware and wary of that window. So they're keeping their eyes on it. They know, they know. But no, nothing's going to quite come out. Hazard Bear realizes that, that he's been figured out, so it's not going to be the move to be running out there. Just adding some more pressure there, some pressure that he wasn't able to find last round on the realm and just scaring the attackers into wasting some time. Exactly as you said, not able to do that too much last round. It was the other player in Bakery who did most of the scaring and the delaying. Here, though, the aggression might pay off. We'll see. Time will tell as it continues to go on. We're about a minute into the round. Atlas playing a similar position as last time. Their wall is going to be opened up for free. There's nothing to deny that. The only denial they're bringing is the bandit, and I'm sure it's more on the walls of the site rather than the walls of the bakery here. So that's just going to be a freebie for them. But it does at least make them use that utility of hard breaching. So they have one less pair of aces to throw. Uh, that's going to be hurting them quite a bit, potentially. There's there's three walls that could be really valuable to be opening up. Uh, also starting to be hurting on the Twitch drone count could be a problem. A frag grenade we saw earlier get a kill right through here. But this time our Nook isn't going to be lucky enough to have someone playing right on the other side of the wall. They will know that it's a little bit safer, though. Not that they can really capitalize on it yet. You know, I kind of wanted to see one of those utilized, one of those grenades utilized on the drone hole. Pete going to get that kill on to Cheesy, so getting a little revenge. I think they're opening death last time. Now they get the opening kill in the favor of Hawk, guys. Things are already going a little bit better than the last round on this site. Now the attack has only four players to work with in a minute to do so, trying to get this execute through. It's going to be another kill, though. Atlas on to TSS, so Hawkeye already in a really good position, man count-wise. Lobster finds another on to Snakes. Things are falling apart for the attack of Bryant, and it's all up to Skippy, who's had a heck of a game here again on map two, but him and Semi have to pull off some miracles here in the 2v5. 
Just like last round, the man can starting to just cascade in favor of Hawkeye College this time. They get yet another, and it's leaving Semi on his own. He's got some intel to work off of, potentially, with his kit. He finds Hazard Bear here, who has been just hugely impactful on the round this time, but he's oh, going no. to be downed and finished by the Eda 12S. A little bit of a sad way to go, but it's not going to mean too much to Hawkeye Community College. They've lost their Valkyrie, but the round is surely there, especially with those smokes going off themselves. Yeah, bad the stats. He's gonna, he's gonna risk the KD. He is you know, he's going and try and heroically save the day. Not able to do so. The wagon smoke will find them. And breathing in that toxic uh, gas, it's gonna hurt you a lot. And eventually you'll be shut down, put in the dirt, joining your team. And Hawkeye able to let another round go in their favor. Not let Ryan get any further away from them. They get to go back to third floor since they lost on Kitchen previously. They're getting that opportunity to head back upstairs. They're looking for yet another round to try and even it out in round 10 against the Bulldogs. They have really started to claw it back on the defense. You said it was going to be a more favorable side before, and Hawkeye Community College definitely looking more and more comfortable as we get on. I don't know if we saw Hawkeye bring a Maestro last map. It was certainly something we saw on the other side for Brian Bulldogs, but this it might be the first time we're seeing the Maestro in play for Hawkeyes, and I like it. Maestro, very good op, has the Alda in hand, but those evil eyes are also very useful. And then you're pairing it with more cams on the Valk, so there's just a lot of information that the Hawkeyes can gather and utilize and even act upon, potentially, depending on positionings. So that's just something to add further to their toolkit. The beepers on the Wamai are also going to give some positions away potentially. So things are looking good for Hawkeye, at least in the information game. But it really comes down to the positions and the timing of if those will actually be utilized to gain kills, right? Because at the end of the day, that's what you need in FPS. You need the kills. So the evil eyes, though, they're going to be placed on the pillars into the uh, cocktail and bar area, depending on where they want them to put them. And there was one actually near the new hatch drop. So interestingly enough, that'll be what they use to gather that information in case the drop comes through. So uh, in other news, I was doing a little inventory of the KDs across the board, and uh, I'm, I'm quite pleased with myself here on our earlier calling out the impact of Atlas and Hazard Bear specifically, who are currently topping the leaderboard for both teams with 11 and 10 kills respectively, really doing that work to get their team back into the running and making the most of use of their time on the board. I more for me than anything really is just say hey look i was right but it's a huge shout out to those two players for the impact they've been having to claw it back another drone shot out information gain was it worth it who knows yana clone gonna drone out someone down below skylight as well giving that information away have to be really careful with the utility you do have a decent amount because if it's sophia ash grenades on the yano probably a gone six as well so you have a decent amount of things that you can use to destroy these evils and perhaps even destroy some other things like the bulletproof if you'd like to so it's not like this is a crazy amount that they have to clear semi though gonna get that opening kill down below has a bear on that roam all the way in the bottom floor it does a lot of damage but that's gonna be a body found early for bryant and that's gonna help them out there's that vertical clear semi making sure that they don't have anyone to contend with from below unfortunately pete up here doesn't have a shield to be playing off of on pixel but the Bulldog attack hasn't really put any attention towards Red Stairs yet. Still kind of struggling to find their foothold on the third floor and actually get anyone finding pressuring sight lines onto the objective with a minute 15 left. That might start to hurt. Uh oh, he just missed him. Semi, uh, I think it may be because of the uh, the cloak being on, but hey, look at the kill anyway. Atlas drops. That's both the top fraggers you highlighted off the board early here. So that's gonna make these other players have to step up on Hawkeye. They're in a 3v5 situation. There's the Yana clone giving some information away. Cheesy gonna pick up a kill on that information, possibly onto Pete. Lobster though, trying to get the refrag, trying to bring it back. Gets Cheesy with the Alda, nice headshot there, but still more work to be done. You have 40 seconds remaining. That's plenty of time for these attackers. I think Semi able to gather information with the sound call. They know someone's on this construction area, but the peak come up misses, and Skippy on the window is going to capitalize. Wagon's taken out. Lobster is the last one alive with the Alden hand. Can't find Ooh. one. Snakes over in the bar area puts them out of their misery, and Bryant are putting themselves onto map and match point. 
That double peek onto White Stairs is just delightful. What a thing. Imagine, imagine peeking it. You know exactly where Semi is. You got the 416C. You're ready to find a head. And you just get beamed from the window of all the places. Someone right behind the target that you've acquired that will catapult the Bulldogs onto that match point. They could finish out the series right here, right now in this next round. If they are able to find the foothold that they need on this attack, they're bringing... Uh, a lot of launchables here this time with the Yang, which could do a lot to flash out that site and find them some more sight lines a little bit faster. And if they're able to play out pretty similarly in the last round, that's exactly the way that they're going to finish it up. Interestingly, they're going to opt away from hard breach completely. They don't feel like they need it. I mean, Ying could they be bringing a hard breach. Last round. Yeah, and I, I think that's pretty much what they feel like. They looked at last round's results. They think they're going to go to the same bomb site, which they are, but this time they actually have a, a shield to put in Pixel, so maybe that'll help them stay alive a little bit longer, but still. No hard breach means they will have to do a similar formula of getting kills and just continuing to follow it up because you don't have the option to open up extra avenues unless they're allowing some soft walls for you to have some destruction onto, but on a bomb site like this one, there's not a lot of walls to open up in the first place. And as you can see, many of them are going to be reinforced. So it will limit the angles that can be taken for these attackers of Bryant because they didn't bring the hard breach. But at the same time, like you said, last time didn't seem to have any effect. Yeah, I think the explosives might be what really puts them ahead this round if they're able to find the mark on those and removing obviously the gadgets there is a shield back on pixel again, which I mentioned quite a few times, but it's such an impactful position right there. Well, they have the Wamai and Jaeger, I believe. No, never mind. No Jaeger. My bad. Miss, miss Saw there. But they have the Wamai, so I can keep that alive a little bit longer. But that still isn't that hard to clear. Again, look at the utility being brought out. So many things. There's a throwable or shootable, depending on how you want to look at it, that is brought on every single operator on attack here. So they certainly can clear out any of these Wamai discs that might be present. Snakes, though, going to try and gather that information. Last time we saw that they did see a player below from the Skylight Wingle. Going to be using the same thing to Gemini clone. Just going to be used in tandem with drones, different players doing different things, finding different pieces of information. Where are these players? Where are the evil eyes? That kind of thing. That way they can get the execute and get the kills that they need. The push has shifted a little bit, and with it being very vertical centric starting on the roof it makes me a little bit worried that bulldogs haven't brought the hard breach this time because just having that ace on the team is super easy to open up a red wall and that on its oh. own is going to give them plenty of leverage this is exactly what atlas wants down here though trying to find skippy who doesn't have the full drone work he doesn't have a teammate droning up ahead of him he's just self droning Ooh, but atlas gives away the fact that someone's watching the window he might have been able to get a quick kill right there if he just stood up and looked to kill Skippy before he could get off the drone. Oh, but Skippy gets him. That was a uh, Mexican standoff, really, just watching and seeing who's going to peek first, who's going to do it. And it's Skippy who gets this cheeky little angle and finds the rat in the corner laying down prone. So Atlas, a, a valiant effort on that one, but honestly, probably a little too conservative. Lops are going to be downed as well. They're playing in heaven for some reason. Snakes just drops in and gets the freebie onto them, but there's a player in stage with a, a quick flick from Snakes. going to get that kill somehow. Oh my goodness. Now it's all up to Pete and Wagons, and Pete is already done. It's all 1v5 for Wagons. This is it. This is map and match point, and he has to clutch out with the SMG-11 in hand does a lot of damage but it's a flawless to finish it brian bulldogs win 2-0 wow what a way to finish that it's almost as if brian started to get impatient with this they see that match point they see the end of their series in sight and once they find that first kill skippy getting the better of a mute downstairs they just they just pushed on a site and kept winning those gunfights which they were consistently able to do throughout the series so even in those 50 50s they're just rolling those box cars and it just took them all the way to the finish with a beautiful flawless there to really accent a nice 2-0 series in their favor well the first map was really interesting to see skippy have such impact right 18 kills we mentioned it but yeah. then the second map they still did well don't get me wrong they were one of the top records right but it was a lot more even so their team worked a lot harder together it felt like they had to right because hockey was playing so much better on the second map there but still brian bulldogs able to come out on top and it was really the team play that we saw the even uh, amounts of kills we saw on the other side there was two players atlas 
and I'm trying to remember the other the other teammate who had a lot of kills there on on the side of uh, Hawkeye. But either way, they had two players with double digits trying to carry them a little bit with the kill department. Obviously, I don't, I don't like saying that because uh, these other players could have been feeding them information to get those kills. So I don't want to undervalue the other teammates, what they were doing. But no matter how you look at Bryant did look a little bit more dominant map one and then clearly won map two. So they're just able to gel a little bit more. It felt like they felt just a little more comfortable and they felt a little more warmed up when they were starting these maps. Obviously, Hawkeye came in a little bit better on the second map, but then one round in, then they just lost one after another after another. So I think they just let Bryant get a little too streaky on them. They're allowing them to string together too many rounds in a row and things just surmount against them. It's kind of what it felt like. So Bryant really good at catching that momentum. Yeah, it's that that consistency of gameplay, keeping the game plan consistent <laughs> across multiple rounds mm. in a row. Uh, I, I feel like, especially on the roam and on the entry, it was a little hard to tell what HCC was going to get out of it. Hazard Bear, that other player that uh, ended up performing pretty well for Hawkeye Community College, uh, while he was on some really hot streaks, he really got it, and sometimes he just wouldn't be able to find any impact for his team, and it would be a roam that just never got to actually play on the site or get into a real gunfight. And if the rest of the players that are more supporting that gameplay can't find their entries into a good fight either, well, that's exactly how we're going to see these rounds where Brian Bulldogs just cascade through and find kill after kill after kill and just mop up all of the defenders so great uh plays from both teams especially as we got to see community uh, hawkeye community college get going but bryant bulldogs really showing that they deserve that win to continue on 2-0 in week three of the necc hey, great job from them don't want to take anything away from Hawkeye. They played well, but Bryant came out on top here. So they're going to move on with that flawless record so far. It's only been two weeks worth of games. One week was a bye. That's why we are week three, but a bye for this division was uh, week two. So that's why they're 2-0 now in week three. So just to clarify that, but there's other games happening. There's still the B stream that you can go check out. I'm sure that that was a little delayed in the start. So it should be still going on. Go check that out. And then we do have another matchup here at 9 Eastern. So don't forget to come back and check that one out as well. But for me and Treasure, that's all there's going to be for tonight please come back check out the may uh the match later on but again that b stream is going on so jump over there and we'll see you later Good night everybody
Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the NECC. This is week number three, and I have a very lovely special guest, my longtime friend, Tristan Parker, is joining me in the broadcast booth. Corbeck, how's it going? We ready for another match? Oh, I love how I always say oh, I'm I totally gave you a beautiful totally intro, muted. man. You I was did, hyping you, you up, yeah. Tristan, and then you're uh, just like, I don't want to talk to him. Oh my god, I've gone through a blender. Lord help us. I yeah, don't know it happens. It happens. So anyway, we're all good. No, I am looking forward to this match today. It's Champions Division, uh, so it's a slightly you know higher level of play. Hopefully, we'll see you know some good aspects coming out of this team, some good gameplay. I mean, coming off of the back of SI 2022, I think there's a lot of uh, inspiration out there in the world of Rainbow Six Siege. So it'll be interesting to see how the players take that inspiration and translate it to gameplay. Well, let's talk about those players now. Let's actually bring up our rosters. We're going to start off with the St. Clair College and those representatives. Now, there are some familiar names if you've been following Collegian at all. It's going to be that third player in line, but it's Rapid Kinger, JM Beast, a legacy player in Collegian, both here in the NECC as well as in the face at R6CC, CEA as well as CR6. And then it's going to be shares followed up by salty boy Jesus. Yeah, that's a it's a decent lineup there from the Saints. I mean, unfortunately, they were 0-1 in their first match. And, and when I say 0-1, that's their record. They actually lost that matchup 0-2 on maps uh, against Purdue Black, who are an experienced squad. And unfortunately, uh, I think they got taken 0-7 on the first map as well. So a little bit rough, but they've had a bye week here now, Brian. So maybe they've had a little bit of time to, to right the ship. But let's take a look at their opponents, which will be Southern Illinois University, Edwardsville. Uh, or Southern Illinois University Edwardsville Red. I think they also have the Cougars as a mascot, as you can see by that uh, Cougar head there on the side. And that'll be Pineapple Bomb, Waffles, Gold Unicorn, Soy the Bean, and It's Me, Chuck D, uh, rounding out the roster there. A veteran roster, lots of seniors, and uh, one junior there, the the freshman, kind of the, the standout. So... Tristan, do you think it changes the game at all if you are weighted towards seniors? Because if we go back over to St. Clair, it is two seniors, Kinger as well as uh, Shares, and then everybody else on the roster being a freshman. So do you think it's going to be an advantage to have an all-upper-class team, or at least one that's more heavily weighted like Edwardsville? Uh, you know, it's it's hard to say, and I, I think we've seen a lot of variation here at the NECC over the seasons, right? Uh, seniors in particular, I think they do, right, bring a certain level of maturity to the play, but at the same point in time, uh, sometimes those young kids, man, they're just talented, right? They're just gunners out there looking to prove themselves. They've got a whole kind of road that they, they see ahead of them, and this is part of that step in the process. So they have a lot to prove. Uh, when I don't think that always translates over to seniors all the time, but I think if I was crafting a perfect roster I would probably lend towards more seniors in it than not. Well, you're talking about a road, and I want to go to our road map and what maps we're actually going to be playing. Here's our map veto. Best of three today, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to be the Dub House Clubhouse, followed by a unique pick, something that we don't always see here in NECC, and that's going to be Coastline, followed up by Chalet. Honestly, Tristan, I adore this map pick because sometimes, let's be honest, we see Oregon, Cafe, and Clubhouse. And you know what? We're spicing things up already here in week three. I'm on board for it. Yeah, it's definitely a bit different from what we normally see in terms of their overall light ups. So that's uh, pretty exciting here as we hop into Clubhouse. Obviously, you know, Clubhouse is a very popular map. Uh, one of the most popular maps, I think, probably overall. I believe it was it was played, you know, decently well over at SI, and it's been played decently well. It might be one of the top two maps here in NECC, uh, so it shouldn't be anything too surprising here as we go into the ban phase. And uh, these bans, well, it's interesting to see a Maverick taken off the board here, Brian. He doesn't always get taken out. You often see a Hibana in that slot, but sure enough, he is gone. That could have some uh, strategic implications. I'm going to you know, say something very controversial. Maverick is by far the best ban on Dub House, especially when you don't ban Kate. Honestly, Maverick is terrifying. When Maverick is on the board, Cash CCTV feels claustrophobic. It feels almost impossible to play because the Maverick just slices and dices that exterior mm -hmm. flat wall, and all of a sudden you have this breach gaping open. And what do you do? You retreat into cash? Well, no, that's not a viable option. You're not going to be able to defend the wall. So you have to go with like a nitrocell denial, either 
by throwing those nitros over the wall or rotating down to lobby, which can also turn into quite a kill box. So Cash GC TV is something that we're going to have to monitor throughout the day, Tristan, because with the lineup that we have now, Maverick and Thatcher, it's going to be very difficult for our teams to open up that wall. And that's actually why we're seeing Edwardsville elect to go to that bomb site first. Yeah, it does make CCTV a lot more viable, right? This is a site that I think people have come to realize overall in the Siege meta has become a lot less defender sighted than it used to be. That was really clearly illustrated uh, over at SI, uh, which is, you know, our kind of our benchmark. It, it's it, And the removal of the Maverick here is, I think, does make that Kaida removal absolutely necessary, especially without Thatcher on the board. So I think that's a good ban, but it's worth pointing out Mira could be in the mix here as well. We're not going to see her on this particular site, uh, but she will be lurking waiting in the wings uh for some of the other bomb sites but i think i read a statistic today when i was looking at like individual bomb sites on clubhouse and this is actually the worst one for defenders funny enough in terms That's of correct. si so a little bit different uh but it is kind of fascinating that that point has fallen so far from grace so if you're referencing the SI statistics, I'll actually bring them up right now. There were 25 maps played across SI with a total defending win rate of 55% across Clubhouse, 65% for Church Arsenal with right. 112 rounds played out of 285. Next most played bombsite was Cash CCTV with a 47% defending win rate, for, or probably 74 rounds played. Uh, Jim was next up with a 51% defending win rate, 73 rounds played out of the 285, and then a 50% win rate for Bar Bar, but only 26 rounds played. Right, not a big sample size down there in Bar Bar, which is no. a shame because it's a fun site, but look at this, Kinger, uh, he's boosted already. The round's just started here as he pushes into supply. He's got Drone back up there as well. Uh, Brian, so he's got a little bit to work with. Uh, Gold Unicorn uh, needs to be a bit careful because uh, the, the foxes are already inside the hen house here. Well, this is what we were alluding to earlier, Tristan. How do you hold this bomb site? Well, one of the ways you do is with players, roamers downstairs. And St. Clair is Ooh. already alleviating that pressure. They're applying so much pressure. They're pushing from two different angles simultaneously. From Garage, down below, and now two kills to their name. All of a sudden, this Edwardsville defense, it's starting to crumble on top of their heads. But you still have some information devices. It's going to be those echoes. It's going to help you gather and... Well, send those nitro cells down range, but Pineapple, the only one left with a nitro cell, Tristan, finds themselves in quite a precarious predicament. Their DBA node now finished off, and uh-oh, this round has completely gone sideways. It's only been 70 seconds. Yeah, it really has gone sideways, and Waffles, I mean, desperately trying to stave this off, but King Ur is just going to take down Waffles from the side in a flawless round here for St. Clair to start. And man, I'll tell you what, Brian, that was a, that was the most aggressive attack I think I've seen on CCTV Cash in a really long time. No hesitation there at all. It was a coordinated push. That's what led to that feeling of aggression because St. Clair, it wasn't like they were rushing. It wasn't like they lit their hair on fire and was just running into the building. It was a coordinated level of aggression. We saw Finca Kinger being droned in through stock. We saw JM Beast off screen get the same level of treatment, a drone information for them to find a kill with the L85. And the same story with Rapid. It was multiple team members coming together and it was just information acquisition getting kills and from there when you have three kills underneath your belt the bomb site is practically undefendable and you can see what happened to edwardsville they are forced to cower in the a bomb site and from there it's kind of like shooting fish in a barrel yeah it's exactly what you know kind of the key problem that can happen on this site too is if you sort of get forced back the angles get cut off right for the defenders you do get sectioned into a corner like you said and it's like well shooting fish in a barrel is a good and apt metaphor for it interestingly red has chosen to go back here uh, edwardsville making i think a, a bold choice in doing that instead of just transferring down to the basement arguably the more defendable site they've gone with a wider uh, kind of comp as well a little bit more i think roam oriented in a lot of ways but i just don't know that that's going to stifle that level of coordination and aggression we saw out of saint Clair, especially if the drone work is still as good as it was on the last push so we'll see if they kind of i mean i just don't know how this comp is going to fare when they're kind of forced back into it you know and forced into a more tight defense they're the, the only anchor you have is it's me chuck d really there's no wall denial right now tristan so all walls can get opened up whether or not that's the exterior of garage or the exterior portion of east platte 
One thing I will add, though, is I hate going to bomb sites back to back. At least Edwardsville is bringing out a completely different bomb site. So you could make an argument, or pardon me, a completely different lineup, which makes it a completely yeah. de different bomb site defensively. Unfortunately, though, the growing pains of Cash CCTV seem to be striking Edwardsville. They have a great roam downstairs, but the players on site are starting to feel that asphyxiation. Another player drops, and now it's Pineapple Bomb, who's lurking downstairs still. They have a Nitro Cell. That's going to be good enough to maybe find a kill, but they seem very laser focused on what could be taking place on the Garage Rafter stairs. Hot nades in the background, and it's Hot Potato as Rapid ends up losing their life to that friendly nade, but hey, that does mean one thing. Pineapple Bomb will get some indication that there is something odd going on above them. Nitro Cell gripped and ripped, dispatched down range. That should be good enough for a kill, just slightly off though. And as we enter in the post plan, Pineapple makes a ton of noise up the red stairs, and they end up losing their, rice, their life through that endeavor. I, I honestly, if you're sitting on the side of uh, Edwardsville right now, you, you need to bring Mute. I don't even think it's like debatable. Like I would be bringing both Mute and Mozzie at this stage because it's very clear that St. Clair are making a lot of work um, off those drones, like a lot of work. You see multiple drones out running around as they're pushing in and Mozzie alone does not have the capability to deny them, but a Mute and a Mozzie, you're not gonna completely shut down the drone infrastructure, right? But you're gonna do significantly more to damage it. They're not bringing that out here, Brian, but I, I genuinely think that's a mistake because I really think those drones and the intel that's being gathered here is just absolutely shredding them. And I think one thing that we're seeing from St. Clair is just their experience in the collegiate ecosystem. Not very familiar with Edwardsville, if I'm going to be transparent, but St. Clair has played in CR6, R6CC, mm -hmm. which is the Face It League, and CEA. They have played against the best teams in Collegiate. We've had this talking point before against uh, other teams, particularly when they're playing against Purdue, a top three team nationally rated in Collegiate. And, you know, it takes a lot to learn from those high-level teams. St. Clair's had the privilege of being able to play against all of those teams. I think we're starting to see that experience be applied here in week number three. You, you very well might be right there, Brian. And I mean, I, I think that dearth of experience helps, right? Significantly a team prepare uh, to play in collegiate. Uh, but again, you, you just see like the amount of information that Rapper gathered right there, right? Because you, you can't have someone be in all positions at once. They also don't really have anyone who can, I think, effectively control the tunnel very well, which could mount some serious problems here if St. Clair just tries to, to sort of force that issue. You see a couple of their uh, operators looking over there, but nothing, I think, strong in terms of commitment Hitting. It's also a very tight defense. I mean, you see Chuck D making a bit of a contest on the top floor, but in the face of the LMGE, I mean, that's it's basically nothing at all, uh, which means that most of the members of Edwardsville will be contained to the point, uh, which isn't, I think, going to help them all too much when push comes to shove here. Oh, it's so unfortunate. Pineapple Bomb just launched two impact grenades on the 1x2 configuration, the X-Cairo pellets, and they missed. I'm glad that we're seeing Edwardsville put that level of effort to defend that hatch. Unfortunately, it just doesn't go their way, which seems to be kind of the motif so far here on Clubhouse, where they're doing a lot of things well. They're just not putting all the pieces together. St. Clair has absolute vertical control. The one thing that they can do next, though, is continue to have that sledgehammer swing to potentially remove any player of Edwardsville that might be lurking towards the west side of Armory. And now that you have Rapid taking a drone in through a dirt tunnel, it's going to be this multi-pronged attack, and St. Clair has done a couple of things well, particularly fast-paced attacks in the first half of a round. Wow. Ooh. Been killed by a pineapple but there to turn that around just a little bit. But again, you see the efficacy of the drones, right? They're, they're genuinely not pushing without that intel going in. So the double frags come flying out here as well. Pineapple in a very dangerous spot stacked up behind the boxes in armory will just kind of rotate around, but still hasn't really been denied the position yet. Can hold here for a little while longer. And it's sort of the key defensive linchpin right now. If they don't remove pineapple, it's not really safe to draw off the hatch and it's a little hard to push down red tunnel. Soy too, stepping into a position here where he could counteract the hatch drop. So a good reactive defense from Edwardsville, but I just don't know if it's going to be enough for them to hold on here. A couple of shots coming down range by Pineapple and St. Clair stalling out just a little bit. Good play by Pineapple to reverse back, but Rapid with the trade almost immediately. 
St. Clair has put them in a bad spot, just final funneling out through Dirt Tunnel. But Shares is actually putting the bomb down. A Nitro Cell has missed his target, which is going to allow Shares to once again relocate and go for a bomb plant. The top floor has been retaken as Ezraville is able to use the hatch against St. Clair, and it's a flood onto this bomb site. Great round from the defense of Edwardsville. They still have life left in them, Tristan, and they just come out swinging. They correct their mistakes, but now, where do you go? Back to Cash, CCTV, or Jim Bedroom? I think you have to go Jim Bedroom, right? I, I think that you don't have a choice. I mean, they're going to go back to Cash. I think that's a mistake. It's been clearly shown that that is not a good bomb site for you. You struggled there. Even with this change in lineup, it didn't really work out last time, right? They didn't have a significant advantage. And, and if you're on the side of St. Clair, I mean, this is just freebies, right? You just run back in the exact same way that you ran it last time, and you can be relatively assured that you're going to come out on top of this. And I don't know if there's a reticence, like uh, there's a cycle logical block against playing Jim Bedroom or what it is, but it's not a bad site, it, it, especially when you have Mira. Like, you, you have Mira on the board, which means you can do the classic Mira window bathroom setup, which makes it much harder to or for an opponent to take out kind of the jacuzzi wall and push through from that angle. Yeah, I, I, I disagree with this choice. I, I think they're, they're making a bit of a blunder here, and I think it's going to come back and, and bite them. Well, bold choice, but Edwardsville is now locked in. Once again, they're electing to not bring out any type of wall denial. So this is going to allow St. Clair to immediately open up long angles, whether or not it's downstairs in a garage looking into our 90, our window, or our rotate, as well as the flat wall. And you can also even do more with that. What happens if St. Clair wants to experiment with their offensive takes instead of just doing what they've been doing the previous two executes back in round one and round two, they can go for a backside take, uncontested as well so a lot of flexibility given to St. Clair due to the defending lineup of Edwardsville and well St. Clair they're going to go with what has been tested before in their previous two executes they're already starting to apply emphasis over into stock but my friend Kinger please don't use gone six on green barricade it's not going to help you better off using it for utility that was a beautiful shot though that was a beautiful shot. Good reflexes there. But yeah, you're right. It's a, it's a waste of a very valuable tool to, to blow out a door unless there's a, you know, a really specifically understood rush purpose, right? And that's about the only cases you really do that. But yeah, they, they've got all the all the run here that they possibly could want. I, I don't know what there really is in terms of contesting garage, but we actually saw Gold Unicorn on a similar approach here before. It didn't work out last time. They have the smoke holding rafters. That's a interesting choice usually you'll have your smoke in a in a different position entirely luckily he's got a little bit of projectile denial right there but it's just not enough he's taking a lot of damage that's the go signal right there can't confirm the kill how are those nine oh, no. headshots what was that <laughs> oh, i think it was hitting the bar actually i think that's how uh beast was able to just walk up and, and survive a series of unfortunate events but none of the players on the side of edwardsville has a last name of baudelaire so at least that's something that's going in their direction rapid lines up a headshot but elects to kind of miss those shots but this is a calm before the storm as saint Clair is still establishing their, their map control now edwardsville does have something going for them that's the flank of golden unicorn they are able to dish out some damage but jm beast knows that something's going on through swamp and still loses the gunfight no damage being dealt, but Shares is able to get the diffuser on down. A rush on four to deny. Rapid's cover is good for two kills, and now it's Golden Unicorn, but no Golden Ace up their sleeve, and they sent, get sent packing home in round number four. The third attempt of Cash CCTV doesn't work again. It just wasn't a decisive enough flank. I just don't, they just did not get enough value off of it. It's very similar to what happened when they played that site the last time as well. Uh, he had a very similar flank. This time, at least, he managed to secure a kill, uh, but he didn't really get anything more off of it. He wasn't in a particularly good challenge position, right, to take back rafters or to deal with the repel on balcony. It's just a unfortunate, unfortunate setup there. But man, I, I feel quite bad for uh, the, the, the defense in rafters. It really looked like that should have been a kill. And that would have changed the tenor of things quite a bit. But 
Alas, it was not to be. They will go over and do Jim Bedroom now. I think this is 100% the right choice. They're bringing here a uh, hard breach denial, Brian, which is, you know, a necessity, right? That they are neglected a little bit on those CCTV holds. Uh, they also are bringing both the castle and the mirror, which I think are very solid picks on this site, right? You get a castle barricades up on those windows. That provides you some much needed protection. You get this mirror window down as well. Now that's a really interesting castle barricade. And one that I don't always necessarily agree with. It has it, the idea, I think, right, is to, to make the rotate for an attacker just a little bit longer. Don't give them the ease of access. But the problem with that one in my mind is that it really just uh, can cut off defenders just as well. And I've seen that happen in the past where, you know, it, unless you can use these floor murder holes that they're making, it, it's just not very effective. So the ADS is kind of give away the tell. It's actually designed to make sure that Pineapple, the bandit, survives through a bandit trick. So what they're going to do is they're oh, going to try to have the attackers of St. Clair mm -hmm. burn both of those castles if you want to kill a bandit for free. Now, you can also burn the ADSs. So you have either your Habana or your Thermite rotate on over. They double flash, and then a nade immediately falls, and Pineapple won't be able to trick that way so there's a lot of things that st Clair can do to break down that hold right now though they're kind of minding their p's and q's and i actually like the emphasis that st Clair is putting on the map where oh oh, oh my wow I, I, didn't i just say i like the emphasis that they were putting not exactly what i was expecting to see but it's a terrorizing round three kills for kinger already we haven't even seen 40 seconds tristan and the defense of edwardsville is starting to crumble kinger is now completely in the bomb site and the hunting pack the wolf pack is still ongoing one more kill for the ace and they're not good for it oh it's so unfortunate oh it was it was going so well but that was five deaths in 55 seconds uh, the double kill from the grenade was absolutely ridiculous. I don't even think probably King or thought in their wildest dreams they were going to pull that off, but they did. And the unerring accuracy of King or being able to tell exactly where all the defenders are, it really stands in kind of a testament to how strong this team is. Good swing here by Pineapple. Oh, no. Unfortunately, he just can't land his shots and that, that gym set blocking it there, Brian. And that kind of feels like a, a perfect summation of how this game has felt so far for the folks from Edward. Edwardsville, they just cannot seem to catch a break here on these defensive rounds. And it's not like Edwardsville is doing anything particularly egregiously wrong, especially with that gym bedroom. In fact, I, I love the setup. I love where they're placing their mirror windows. I like the emphasis that they're putting on the bandit trick. I like how they're protecting the bandit. The thing is, it seems like Edwardsville is kind of just copying and pasting a template, if you will. They know the mechanics of a round, but they're forgetting some of those nuances and they're forgetting ways to counter a strategy, right? Where St. Clair, they respect what Edwardsville was doing in the previous round. They realize that it's such a strong hold and cash CCTV that they can't take heads up gunfights against Edwardsville. So you're going to have to start to get very creative. And the way to be creative on that gym bedroom is to go underneath, very similar to how St. Clair was executing in cash CCTV. TV, you whip those nades, you start to soften up those defenders, and from there, the round is just broken. Yeah, it was it was the double grenade, right, that really did them in on that one. It's it's hard to recover from that kind of loss within the first 15 seconds of a round. Purely from a, I mean, from a gameplay perspective, certainly it's hard to win the 5v3 even when you're on the defensive side, but from the mental perspective as well, I mean, that's just ridiculous, right? Like, it's a worst case scenario. You could not ask for a worse scenario than watching that go down. So, I, I think that was very rough for them right there, but again, it's the kind of decisive nature of these St. Clair attacks that we've seen throughout near five rounds so far it's it's pretty hard i think for for edwardsville to overcome that i mean what do you do in this situation when you're just kind of getting run down like that uh, the the options probably feel relatively limited here and st Clair is not showing any signs of slowing down right in terms of the tempo of these attacks and their drone game still remains impeccable after all this time they're getting so much intel off of those drones i i hate to keep harping on it but it is ridiculous so you have a Mozzie in play, and that's at least going to remove some of the drone play, but the gentleman that had the 4K in the previous round is going to find the opening kill once again, and Chuck taking this aggressive stance. Honestly, I'm not comfortable with this, Tristan, because Chuck is kind of flirting with death. I mean, there's an LMGE upside-down repel holding the cut. 
And that's so difficult to do. Rapid's going to fall, so that's going to be a set of nades and gone six off the board. Pineapple should be able to get traded from that, so they were DB and node from that gunfight. And with plenty of, hopefully, teammates lurking on by, that should be able to get rectified. And St. Clair has stalled, to be fair. They've slowed up their attack. This is exactly what Edwardsville needs. It is exactly what they need. They need a moment to kind of collect themselves. They'll go in and I think hopefully get their res on Pineapple. Uh, but again, they're being droned and they're being watched as well by JM Beast here, who's just trying to tippy tap shots in and will succeed in putting Pineapple down for good. And now a 4v3 situation here for Edwardsville. You just sort of have to circle the wagons and hope for the best at this point in time and, and see if you can get anything more. That's not going to help. Kinger hitting yet another frag grenade kill has just been absolutely devastating with the those thrags throughout this entire game and kinger's got control of the tunnel here as well it'll just come running right down and no holds barge salty boy can probably just get off that repel angle uh -oh. if they really wanted to jm beast with the perfect cover there onto chuck d absolutely annihilates him and now it's just soy the bean hiding in a corner here behind some boxes not hopeful oh poor soy the bean you have four players to find, one upside down repelled, so that's going to prevent you from retaking top floor, and three other attackers lurking in the B bomb site, spread out and holding any insertion point into that bomb site. Soy is going to learn that lesson the hard way, taking a ton of chunk damage. 100 damage, now 5 HP to their name. No nitro cell to break up the holds. You're going to have to win these gunfights with the commando, and the rotation into blue, the deeper portion of that, is going to allow Kinger to find the opening kill, as well as the final kill. Well done to the offense, and Save Claire is going to be able to take the half five one yeah it's it just the attacks are just too good i mean it's just genuinely too good too coordinated too well put together the the things that they needed to do they were doing perfectly i mean i'll point you back to even just a micro example of it the drop through the hatch there uh at the tail end of that round right before chuck d died was covered i mean it's just really well thought out right and, and to a certain extent edwardsville is kind of allowing them to do a lot of that stuff right they don't have a player in a position where they can particularly threaten uh that hatch drop in the way that it really probably needs to be threatened or even threaten the kitchen floor but at the same time i St. Clair, they just look it's just relatively immaculate on their attacks so uh, if i'm being honest with you brian it just they, they look like they know what they're doing trust i think what that comes down to is st Clair saints their map is clubhouse and they're demonstrating their their just ability and their understanding on this map they're very comfortable and they've shown that throughout their attack they've made some stumblings and that is important to note let's go back to the first execute into basement that was round three where st Clair, i mean they fatal funneled out of dirt tunnel and they had a very linear push where they were just relying on dirt tunnel as well as the hatch that wasn't really enough for them to established bomb site control so they start to mix things up and particular that control of blue so the good thing for edwardsville is they know saint care can bleed and now how do you apply that to your offensive stint well you establish crossfires and you make sure you don't fall into that pit hole of the saints where you are always pushing from multiple angles and trying to pinch those rat defenders yeah, and I think it's important, right, to, to try and learn lessons. If you're sitting in the, the position of the Cougars right now, you, you just got to learn. No way, Rapid. That was a little too arrogant. Uh, no no offense, but, like, come on, dude. They're, they're, yeah, I know you got them 5-1, but they're not completely incompetent. <laughs> like, that's the that's the oldest peak in the book, like, laying down, watching out of the garage door. Come on now. Anyway, JF Beast here is going to have to rotate over and take garage. It's almost immediately drone down as he starts to back up the stairs here. Uh, you know, it's, it's not a great position for the Goyo to be in, but he should be relatively fine. Good Rotero coming out right there. I don't think they're going to get the trick off fast enough here to stop this. They are not. Kinger, unfortunately, gets the wrong panel and has to run backwards, which does mean that they have a breach, uh, which is a good way to start here. They just need more bodies to get into position here to, to help out. Salty Boy does have a relatively good angle on this, but it's Kinger who secures the first kill on the Gold Unicorn. How on earth is Noah King allowed to get away with this? They're just jacking a boxing into these gunfights, right? They're springing in, they're swinging corners. Of I'm going to be blunt, Tristan. They have no business taking gunfights against, but they're still able to win it. Now, we're going to get, once again, see things start to you slow on down, and the emphasis of Edwardsville is going to be applied over to JMP's playing over in R2, which is a top portion of rafters. An ADS to JMB's name, so they're going to be able to kind of dodge a few bits of projectiles sent their direction, and bullets can also be dispatched from the St. Clair member in that spot. Good for another kill. The great angle that you were loving earlier, Tristan? Sad to say, it's now been dealt with by another Rotara drone. 
<laughs> Good use of the Rateros, though, uh, by the way, which I always appreciate, is Pineapple secures a kill with the Claymore. JM Beast, I think, got a little bit uh, eager right there. The F in chat, I think, realized he's realized the error of his ways, and he will see to correct it next time, I'm sure. So he tries for a frag grenade from below, which I was heard called was a death charge. Still doesn't make any sense to me, but sure. Uh, tries to get that one in. Pineapple here being a little awkward, a little passive right now. I think he's trying to push in through construction or at least thinking about it, but they need more members of the team, I think, to really commit to that idea or at least provide a distraction or he could just be walking to his death. Good shield right there, by the way. Good use of another Volcan uh, to provide shares with a little bit of cover as Waffles is taken out. So, so much for the construction push. Shares get soy and that just leaves Pineapple uh, all alone here. Con might be their burial ground, but they're trying their hardest to find kills. A player identified by the A bomb chassis, but they know about somebody lurking in through red and oh, awkward no. reload, and Pineapple somehow survives the crossover. Bandit oh. gets aggressive, and of course, that's Noah King, pistol in hand, able to find that final kill. I mean, Mr. King here has been all over the map, Tristan. They've been flying, taking gunfights, and just spring into action constantly. I mean, there's a reason why they're the top performer currently for the St. Clair Saints, and well done so far as they find themselves in a nice, comfortable 6-1 to match point. King error is... Yeah, it's just savage. I don't know. There, there's there's not a lot of other ways to describe that. He is the he's the titan of the lobby right now. He is the raid boss here uh, for, uh, you know, Edwardsville. And unfortunately, it looks like the raid's probably going to break up shortly uh, because there's just not a lot they could do to break him down. Uh, again, it, I will emphasize, right? And this is something that I always try and emphasize in these NECC games is that it is a good opportunity uh, just for a learning experience, right? And the only way you're going to get better at Siege of the Khalid level or at any really competitive level is to to take some hits and to learn some lessons right and and there's a lesson to be learned here i think lessons to be learned in how you want to attack and and, and how you want to defend so hopefully edwardsville is, is taking those to the bank but i mean if you look at their lineup right now it's not particularly promising they've got fuse in and we rarely see fuse uh in play in an effective manner as entertaining as he is as an operator don't get me wrong but yeah he rarely works out uh, to an extensive amount uh and, and you know it's just it's rough and these maps do happen this is just the nature of the beast, and I think at a certain point in time, you just start having to look ahead to the next one. Can I sell you on the greatest strategy ever conceived by mankind? Sure, go for it. JJ Blast, the deputy in T3, created a abomination of a strategy. It is Ying when you place the Ying charge through the floor and fuse. Now you're saying, oh, well, that's just dumb. It's gotten oh. kills in the past, and more kills than you would expect, right? If you're over in B, an entirely soft floor, you're usually impact tricking, or you have somebody kind of lurking towards, like, the west side of the bomb site. So if you ying and then follow it up by a fuse, it not only are you flashed, but you have hockey pucks that explode all around you, and all of a sudden you're like, I can't see what's going on, and there's explosions. So it's a very viable strategy. I highly recommend people try it. Sadly... We don't quite have that nuance here, so it's just going to be Soy the Bean acting almost as a tertiary what? hard breacher, but you're already bringing out three hard breachers and rip drone. <laughs> I think it was a drone that was controlled by Mozzie. <laughs> I'm gonna go with that. It was narrative. outside though. It was outside for oh, four seconds. Oh yeah. It, Wait, is that has be that been implemented controlled. yet? Oh my lord, you're right. No, no, not yet. Right. It's still on the test server. Oh. That was that was strange. Like maybe maybe it was just dropped. Like you could drive it outside once it's um, captured for three seconds, but it looked like it's outside for longer than that. Perplexing. Yeah, but it did. Information is king, and I guess not this time. It's whatever. I, at this point in time, if you're going to take out the drone, take out the drone. If it makes you feel better, go for it. I like how Charles has an impact grenade prepped here. Probably think he's going to shut down a hard breach charge, but it very well might just be a fuse. He does actually get the hard breach charge off, though, as uh, Chuck D, meanwhile, going to work on the floor here. Uh, already, Soy the Bean is down, so we will see not a single, nary a single fuse uh, charge used here as Chuck D attempts to claim a kill through the floorboards. Tim pulls out the frag grenade, but he hesitates for just a little too long and the alda 
claims yet another life. Now he's just watching up through the floor as well as Kinger, meanwhile, on the other side end, gets one gold unicorn. Make sure it's not a flawless round there, picking up a kill of their own before being met with a Mossberg on the stairs. And it's 4v1 here. Waffle, zero and six on the round. The only one left alive. Can he turn that Waffle uh, out of a donut? No, he can't. Rapid just blows him away. Wow. That was an incredible Mossberg shot, and what a way to wrap up round number one, or map number one. That was St. Clair's map choice. The Saints, well, dominant performance 7-1 to their name, but again, that's kind of what we were expecting. We came into this series highlighting that St. Clair has a plethora of experience playing in the collegiate ecosystem, and that 7-1 just kind of demonstrates that they have been playing with the best teams in collegiate. And, you know, if we look at the side of Southern Illinois, um, they played against Purdue, top three team in the country currently. And, you know, they struggled. It was a 7-0 and then a 4-7. So I think what yeah. we're just seeing is Edwardsville taking some growing pains. You know, they are starting to play in the championship division, the highest division here. They're playing against some of the best teams in the nation. And you know what? It's a very difficult learning curve. It is. It is a very difficult learning curve. I agree. I, I think my my problem here that I have, Chief, um, is that the next map that we're going to see is going to be Coastline, uh, which is a gunner map, right? It's the TDM match. It's the kill map. 16 kills, by the way, Kinger had. That's why I was making a little bit of face when I came back on camera right there, because that's, un, you know, that's, that's awful. Like, I don't mean awful in the sense that it's bad. I mean awful in the sense that it's ungodly. Uh, no man should have <laughs> so much power in one lobby, right? He's He's got the full Thanos gauntlet there in that one. But the, the, thing, the, the thing is, you're going to Coastline, which is a map that is very frag heavy, and Edwardsville have simply not had a very good track record with their gunfights. They've won a couple, and, you know, I'll give them credit for that, but... I just don't know how they're going to stand up to to St. Clair when you go over to a map where it's gun skill is going to be such a huge factor, right? Uh, it's going to be it's going to be rough, I think. I think for Edwardsville, they need to find a way to shut down Noah King. I mean, absolute dominant performance as you were highlighting over on Dub House. Now, why they break down what went wrong on that map, Tristan, we're going to be stepping away as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please do not go anywhere. Map number two, Coastline will be here in four minutes. Keep this Twitch tab open. See you soon.
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the NECC Champions Division here for Rainbow Six Siege. It's St. Clair University versus the Southern Illinois University of Edwardsville. Red Cougars squared off in this matchup tonight, and unfortunately a bit of a rough start here for the Cougars. I must admit a, a unpleasant clubhouse we saw there. But the reason I bring that up is Coastline, those errors will most certainly compound. If you have a spawn peak looking out towards like Lambador, for example, you get nuked. All of a sudden, you lose half the map control. And from there, it just kind of spirals out of control. A Jaeger ban. Why on earth would we see a Jaeger ban from Edwardsville when they were getting just completely demolished by Nades? That's a very good question. Why would we see a Jaeger ban if that was the situation? Uh, he's also got a good gun on a gun heavy map. That carbine is a, is a friend to to all in need. But I meant to click bandit is what is said in the chat. I have no idea if that's true. <laughs> I genuinely hope it is, because uh, that's just funny. But yeah, it's fine. Whatever. You know, it's interesting, by the way, when you looked at the the operator like overall position on the win pick chart, that uh, C or Jaeger is under is overpicked but under wins. I think that's just because he's in so many games. But it's just an interesting little aspect uh, of that operator. They will bring uh, it's me Chuck D on the Wamai though, so they will I guess have a little bit of projectile denial here, and they're going to start off on Penthouse Theater uh, as their first map. Interesting, they brought a Kaid here as well. I feel like I've seen so many teams here, Chief, just kind of forego worrying about hard breach denial uh, that an operator actually coming in with that specific purpose is is interesting. So the only reason you bring out Cade is because you're going to Penthouse Leader first and you have to defend that north wall, the new addition. Because if you don't, the offense is going to get that incredible long line of sight. They're able to shut down rotations in 90, shut down rotations into uh, uh, the hookah as well as billiards, as yeah. well as into the bomb site. So there's there's tons of angles, but normally you're 100% right. Like, nobody's ever going to, like, I don't bring Bandit, I don't bring Cade for quad wall because, I mean, there are some nice angles to open up from the roof but you even, really are not gonna die to it all that often i'll be honest with you though even on that outside wall like and i and you know that's that's the reasoning behind bringing the kai right uh, yeah I, I would rather i would almost rather consider bringing a mute i know he's not as good as hard breach denial as he used to be but you basically would get two jammers that two or three jammers that you could use in other parts of the uh -oh. map and considering how effective droning has been oh, no. oh it's rapid on the aruni living up to his uh name here and rapidly entering the site not wasting any time at all he swings around the corner right up to the shield gets grismot absolutely lights pineapple up can he get another one he can gold unicorn is dead and there goes it's me chuck d as well a triple kill here for rapid on the aruni and he's not done yet he's got one more soy the being annihilated and there is the ace a solo attack ace off of a rooney that is just ungodly oh my i i don't i don't i don't know how to exist as a human being anymore i don't know i don't know how to to come back from that incredible brilliant well done. I, you know, what, I, I said that Rapid was arrogant. You called him arrogant too earlier. And well, the bravado, the cojones to be able to Amaru in through wipe, find five kills, get hit by, I believe that was a concussion grenade. And Cade was unaware. The other members of Edwardsville was just absolutely lost in the sauce. Oh boy. That, that's, that's a doozy. That's a hard one to overcome. You just lost Clubhouse, 7-1, and then you get aced on by an Amaru that YOLO'd into your bomb site. That's a bitter pill to swallow. 
with like no support either. That's the other thing that's worth pointing out right there. And I mean, I, I still, you know, I stand by my arrogant con comment, but you know, just because someone is arrogant also doesn't mean that they're not talented. <laughs> like Alexander the Great was arrogant, right? He conquered uh, the almost the entirety of the known world. So uh, take for it what you will. Uh, but that was just ridiculous. That was one of those ones where you just watch somebody do all that and it, it fundamentally shifts your worldviews uh, right there. But I, honestly, like when the Grismont went off on the doorway, I think it was a Grismont. That should have been yeah, the was, that like, should have been the warning sign. Like, you know, and, and I think I honestly do think Pineapple was yeah. trying to come back around and watch out for that. But he just got killed so quick uh, on the roll through. I mean, it was just very well played. There, there's not much more that can be said about it. They'll go back to that site again. I doubt that Rapid tries that another time, but uh, it, no. a very impressive <laughs> bit of play. He's going through the hatch. 20 bucks, he goes through the hatch. You're right, yeah, it, he it, probably is. Oh, yeah. but there's somebody near it, and it's reinforced. Uh, oh he gets God. another kill. So far, he has every kill in this lobby. Up through the hatch, there's somebody in front of him. Good for one. The lion kill will gift him another kill as well. This bomb site just seems to be the absolute pain of Edgerinsville. Rapid looks so calm, cool, and collected. A 4K back-to-back -back aces, and JM Beast will Denied. steal the ace away. <laughs> How rude of Jake. That is just unacceptable. God, oh my god, nine kills that. in two rounds? That's that could have been ten. <laughs> JMP getting in there and spoiling it. That could have easily been Ted, but okay. Well, Rapids just uh, decided to go Super Saiyan like two here in this lobby. I don't know. I lost track of the show, so I don't know what's higher uh, these days. But yeah, he, he's he's full weighted closer off. Everything's off. It's terrible. That's just terrible. Uh, like I said, oh. ungodly. Uh, right I don't. There. I don't and know what. <sighs> I was gonna say I don't know what to say really outside of that. I mean, what are you? What's your analysis there, uh, Brian? You know, I, I pride myself. At, I, I pride on myself on being, you know, one of the experts in collegiate. You know, coaching. Uh, oh yeah. Coasting, co coaching one of the top uh, collegiate rosters. Uh, I, you know, casting. You know, collegiate. And just about every team under the sun, and I don't think I've ever seen almost back-to-back -back aces. Honestly, that would have been. I mean. Let's be real. I think Rapid would have got the kill if, if Jam oh, didn't shoot him to the wall. 100%. Like, like the look like the kill was going to take place. Like, I'm speechless. Like, I, I don't even know which is worse. The fact that we just saw flawless nine kills in a row or the fact that JM stole the kill. Like, Jake just absolutely is a bully. Can I have, like, an, a Beatles-level breakup over that, do you think? <laughs> like, that's the that's the straw that breaks the camel's back over there at St. Clair. The, the Dare I say it, the Yoko Ono of St. Clair University, though, unfortunately, she does get too much credit, I think, for what happened. But anyway, I digress. Oh, I, you know, I'm actually interested, uh, Brian, because you are, you know, you collegiate coach. Like you said, you do a lot of work in collegiate as rapid. Tries to do it again, and Soy says no. Enough violence has been perpetuated against the team. Unfortunately, Tracer, Tracer gets it back. Kingers just walked right in, but he will get brought down as well. He's playing the Ash right there, trying to be cheeky. JMB is trading it back on the other side. That's Pineapple who goes down, and now we're in a 3v2, and it's about 30 seconds into the round. So don't let anyone tell you it's not fast-paced. Gold Unicorn there getting lit up by the frag. Challenges on it as the C4 comes up from below and takes out JM Beast, and now a 2v2, but Salty Boy Jesus will come through and collect the kill. The plant is down here as well as Chuck D looking up to the floor right there, considering their options, and Chuck D, the lone defender here comes rotating back up the stairs. Oh, a very difficult gunfight. The P10 Roni recently nerfed, no ammunition. You have a yellow ping, so you know exactly where one of the attackers are, and they'll find out the hard way, as Chuck is going to find that second attacker in the long-range engagement at the time. Well done to isolate the final roamer as they come up that aqua, aqua stairs, the vibe stairs, and I think we could be blunt with this, Tristan. Edwardsville is not vibing whatsoever. I mean, they are in the storm. There's lightning all around them. They have no idea how to stop the brazen pushes of St. Clair as they are just constantly rushing. I mean, what do you do is you just have information. You have somebody on cams at the start of the round. Do you understand where St. Clair is coming from? Honestly, bring out a lesion and from there, just when your gunfights, be gun up, be prepared for a push and it's going to happen.
I mean, it's coastline. You can just you can just trap off this if you really wanted to and try and slow that down. Like bring the frost, bring the lesion, throw the cap kit in there. I don't know. Get Grishmots out. I, whatever you got. Anything that's just going to punish them a little bit for rushing if they if they get uh, too too uncautious in what they're doing. But uh, yeah, I, I also I feel, by the way, for when he was coming up the stairs from Cool Vibes right there, poor Chuck D with the roadie in hand versus the LMG is the, pretty much the worst case scenario you could possibly have for anyone who has a roadie in pocket so that is just unfortunate but i was gonna ask before all that murder started in those 30 seconds brian being that you are you know like a well-versed in collegiate and you coach what would you tell your team if you're in the situation that edwardsville is in right now like what do you, what do you say to them like what's the what's the takeaway here from from this because this is you know undeniably rough you refocus their mind. So you refocus on the task at hand. It's going to be round four. So I, we have to go back to a saying that we have in uh, motorsports. And it's race car drivers have the longest memory and the shortest memory. So what that means is you remember your mistakes. You learn from your mistakes, but you don't let it mentally affect you. you so the way you correct and what you say to your players is, all right, we're going to play round four. We're going to address the aggression and not through like aggression through office like that, but through utility, bringing out Ella mines, bringing out... Um, um, DJ devices from a Lucy, which we currently see in play with that utility, you should be able to stop the onslaught of St. Clair. And look what happens. We see the refocus of Edwardsville. We see them start to play together as a team. They start to swing off each other. If a death takes, if a death happens, they immediately go for a trade and look at how much more confident Edwardsville in this round. They have shut down the aggressive St. Clair. And now you just have shares. The last one alive force a drone out for, but that's going to be a very difficult task since there are currently mozzie pests in their way. <sighs> and it's a, a 1v3 right now. Good effort there by Shares to pick up that kill on Chuck D, but still this is going to be a difficult entry. That said, if Sinclair has demonstrated anything, it's that their players are talented enough to make their way out of such unpleasant scenarios. That really annoying Banshee right there actually causing some serious problems right there. There's that sound cue again. It'll be Pineapple Bomb who swings the corner and gets the kill. So there you go, Brian. Uh, focus on winning the round and win the round. Again, it was team play from Edwardsville. And you know what? Coastline is a map that I despise, and it's my least favorite map in the map pool because of kind of the way St. Clair is playing. Sometimes you just get away with dumb shenanigans and just by running into the map and taking gunfights. The way to counter it is through team play. Edwardsville has learned that. They've kind of almost done the exact same thing that St. Clair was doing. The reason why those rushes were kind of working was because Rapid was just off in Narnia doing who knows what. Now, with team play, Rapid can't do those shenanigans. Yeah, it's 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 true, right? The the thing that shuts down the individual heroics is the team play, and so it's good to see it there for for kind of a a bit of a redemption round, uh, as it were, for the Cougars. Uh, now you just have to keep you know trying to do that again, right? And the, one of the things that it is worth pointing out about these rosters who come in and, and absolutely stomp. I mean, when you get eleven kills, you know, across four rounds or whatever. It, if a team does start to push back on them, sometimes something that does happen is that the very superior squad does get frustrated and can make mistakes. So that is always in the future, right? That's always in the cards. I don't necessarily know if that's the case here for Edwardsville, but uh, the fact that they were able to put up a round, like come back and find the fortitude to put up a round and not just a round, but a round where they had a numerical advantage at the end of it as well on the backside of the, the kind of drubbing of those first two rounds, I think speaks very highly to their, to their valor right in this matchup, which is good. It's what you want to see out of your team. You know, since you're going to be doing more uh, racing broadcasts, we're going to continue on our motorsports analogies. And one of the things that we tell drivers is, if especially if you're overdriving, it's very easy for a driver to go from like overdriving a car to backing down. That doesn't actually translate to rainbow. It's the other way around, where if you're going like absolute YOLO, it is almost impossible to back down. And, and case in oh, point, right? Wow. St. Clair is now just walking into VIP and they got smoked in the process because they don't know how to back down. They are so aggressive. They're just playing absolutely lights out. They're just gun go burr, you know, you must shoot. But they, they don't know when to stop, play coordinate, and start to drone. And now they've lost two rounds because of, well, really dumb plays.
Yeah, it's it's very different from what we saw in Clubhouse, where they you know do this very impeccable droning. They they've got escorted in. It's all very coordinated and just sort of a series of individual players rushing in right there. Good shot by the way from Chuck D uh, to lock that one down and get a flawless round. So yeah, definitely. I don't necessarily think this is a matter of like a collapse or anything on the side of St. Clair. I think that they're just trying to see if they can pick the lock of this Cougar team by just kind of brute forcing it, and it's not really working out for them right now. So I imagine. In, in like a round or two if that trend continues they'll probably snap back to the more coordinated pushes that they were demonstrating on other maps but for now uh, i think they're just going to try and see what they can get by with yeah jam beast is now going to say all right guys everybody's back on leashes we're we're not allowed to just continue to fly at people and i i think what we're seeing is that being demonstrated right now through the six pick right it has been nothing but amaru being shown by rapid they're going to elect to show ayana an operator that they were playing extensively over on the attacks of clubhouse but elect to bring out the zofia lmg so this is now a at least demonstrating it's going to be more of a traditional attack but saint Clair has been nothing but atypical throughout their attacks and it's also gonna be a different bomb site the first time that we're seeing barbar -bar downstairs in this first floor and this can be quite a pickle of a bomb site to deal with because how do you open up mudroom you have to use hard bridge utility to remove or get access to the default plant but you also need vertical no sledgehammer in play and two sets of flat place breaching charges will be enough but only enough to isolate one of the two bomb sites yeah, it only it won't be like you said, it's only enough to isolate one of them. So it's worth putting out there as well. Rapid getting a little bit of valuable drone intel, just playing uh, just dancing outside of the range of the Mozzie Pest. But that's a uh, another actually good drone placement right there from Salty. Speaking of good placements, I always love that black eye camera spot as well. And the fact that Valkyrie is in this match is should theoretically be a bit of an advantage to the defenders. I don't think they really got to capitalize it on it in rounds two and one because things just happen so fast. But it, it is interesting to note. I also like that Osa is in rotation here as well for JMB. Such a strong operator, Brian, that uh, really can shift the entire nature of these attacks. We might actually see it right now as they begin their assault here on offense. Excuse me. First time I ever saw Osa was why well, I casted uh, Sploit and he aced on it on a gun. So Osa is a terribly powerful operator because it allows you to close the distance like we currently see taking place with JMBs, but also allows you to apply cover and kind of take gunfights basically the way that you want to through the use of that shield. And you can also use it kind of like a Monty, a pseudo Monty, and Pineapple is kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, having to deal with that plexiglass shield, pushing them, but you still have Chuck in play. And now that plexiglass shield of Osa has been removed and you have to deal with this Rome presence. Interesting that the green barricade is being placed over in security, but once again, this is kind of creating some comfortable uh, movement for the defense of Edwardsville because if they hear that green barricade get broken over in security, well, that means Chuck is going to have to now deal with a player trying to flank him. But they're maybe missing that Jaeger just a little bit right here uh, for that health, for the, the smoke that's tucked up in their waffles behind the shield. But uh, unfortunately, not a lot they can do about that at that point in time. This push coming in here from office towards Blue Bar, that's got to be uh, kind of raising some eyebrows a little bit. I wonder if they know just how many attackers are concentrated over there uh, versus the kind of one attacker that's now ramp ramping up their way into Hookah. And that might actually shift their perception a little bit. I mean, I know for a fact, right, Chuck D, we can see is is aware that somebody is over there but kinger it's an absolutely brutal kill there uh early on and rapid now watching this window as well will actually peel off of it as they enter into a kind of a sort of quiet stalemate there one of the smokes used early on and that's uh not getting a lot of value at all i'm afraid Ooh, another good kill Ooh. so kinger was on the roof and now has been able to dealt, deal two kills and you've isolated the b-bomb site so it should be a free plant wow we're planting tucked against the bomb chassis. Usually teams are electing to plant wide, uh, towards the north side almost by the rotation, but that's because of the smoke grenades in play. Now we're going to see one of the most difficult things to do, a retake of the bar side and a valiant effort from Waffles as they lead their hidey hole, but it's not going to be able to break the LMG meta of St. Clair in round six and a dominant performance 4-2 in the attacking split of the Saints. 
<sighs> yeah, 4-2 is not particularly grand. I mean, obviously, Coastline does favor the attackers. It's one of the few maps that does, but uh, not a particularly good good showing. I mean, those two ace rounds or near ace round as the second round was, uh, that that is what it is, right? You can't read into that too much. And I will at least give Edwardsville the credit for pushing back uh, on those two rounds and, and in general uh, on the backside of those initial two kind of uh, bloodied moments right there. But now switching over to the attacker side, I'm curious to see how they go about this. Waffles bringing out Ying here, which actually I think makes a little bit of sense considering there's no real projectile denial on the side of St. Clair, uh, which makes it, a, I think, a wise six pick there, Brian. Get those uh, Candelas in action. And I mean, yeah, if you can't beat him in terms of gun skill sometimes why not just straight up blind them <laughs> so it's a it's a plan uh, i'll give it to him right there the copy towel i think is the choice that stands out to me as particularly interesting the copy towel and the iq actually both uh, are two operators that i feel like we don't see played a ton so i'm kind of curious to see what their their idea is behind them i don't know if you have any uh guesses or insights not the first time that Cap has been brought out this game, brought out both in round one and two, but since that was the uh, rapid ace in round one and the rapid 4K in the JM's kill steal, we didn't really see Cap be effective. But what Cap does well is the potential of one-way smokes in the rotation between the two bomb sites, and also the ability just to make sure that the defenders don't retake through that rotation or in through the white quarter. So it allows you to be very precise with that utility. And of course, IQ is being brought out because Valkyrie is in play. Oh, that's fair. Uh, I hadn't thought about the angle of checking out for black eyes and it is maybe necessary, but I guess it's something we didn't necessarily see from St. Clair because they were just so gung-ho in their attacks. They didn't even seem worried about hunting down the individual black eye cameras, uh, but certainly she is effective on that front is JM Beast there with silencer attached. Absolutely wow. annihilates Soy the Bee. And I mean, that is about as good of a shot as you're ever going to see. He does get lit on fire for his troubles, though. I don't know if it was necessarily the best use of the uh, asphyxiation bolts or what have you, but it was certainly used. And I like that the healing coming in there from the Kona station as well. I think at the tail end of that might help JMB's just a little bit recover uh, some of his health, not necessarily his dignity though on the backside of that one. Jake got those two kills because he's running black ice. Fun fact. Is that what it was? Is that the, the critical ice, yeah. decisive factor is the black ice? 100% Tristan, did you not know that Black Ice makes your gun uh, do like a million damage? I, I, I've heard headshot? that hypothesis. I've heard that hypothesis multiple times, but the, the the few Black Ice skins I have, because you can't cross save onto PC, uh, are mostly on pistols. So I don't usually get the benefits of the... Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that, honestly. It's rough. Well, this round's also going very rough for the offense, as Edwardsville has one attacker left. It's going to be the G8, and let's be fair, let's be blunt. The G8 is going oh. to be a weapon that's able to break down this 1v4. I mean, it's an LMG that hoses, but not quite like this headshot. Well done to the defense of St. Clair. I mean, that was a very great round for them. I mean, calm is a cool cucumber, cool cumber. We'll call him a cool cumber since there's cool vibes over in that sector of the map. But, I mean, it's all off the back of the opening kills. The black eye is uh, nine by nine. Vegetables. Wait, is it a vegetable or a fruit? Actually, I don't know for a cucumber. A cucumber? I, I genuinely... Yeah, is it vegetable or fruit? It's vegetable, right? It's I would assume it. it's a vegetable. Get the, but get, the, I mean, it... get the stats people on that. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so, hold on. Wait, fruit have... Wait, 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 wait. So, fruits have seeds in it and yeah. cucumbers have seeds inside of it. So, it they has do. to be a fruit. Right? Mm, I, right? I don't Hold know. on. I studied international relations. I didn't do anything regarding vegetables. Um, I don't really eat them, uh, I, despite what my doctor tells me. So uh, my knowledge yeah, is limited like in that field. Uh, just much like it's limited in the field of black ice skins as well, unfortunately, here as we go into round eight. And we are down in kitchen. Speaking of food or vegetables, as it were, we will go down to the kitchen service area to get started here as the defenders come out on the Italian side. It's some of the usual suspects here. Osa making her appearance. Unfortunately, Waffles not having a ton of success with Osa on the last round, but there's always an opportunity to build back uh, and see if they can do something different. Finka still a very solid choice, one of the strongest operators overall as is iana on the attack and uh, uh, oryx making a uh, rare but always impactful appearance over here on the side of saint Clair. curious to see what jm beast gets up to uh with that particular operator in his hands it feels scary to me and i'm not even in the game i must admit 
So a cucumber is a fruit. It is there you a go. Uh, cumulus um, sativus is its Latin name in the cumier brita uh, family. There you go. Huh. I, I don't speak Latin, so there you go. Latin it is gets a fruit. It, man, I have a degree in finance because I was too afraid to be a doctor or a lawyer and learn Latin. So. Oh, that's 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 fair. They, they had to stop speaking it because they just kept summoning demons. That was the real problem. Every uh, time you try to have a no yeah, every time you have a try and have a normal conversation, you're trying to make call outs in siege and boom, Beelzebub right there in the room with you. Latin dangerous language. Anyway, game time, by the way, <laughs> Oryx still hasn't uh, managed to do anything. But speaking of doing something, Gold Unicorn, they're going to work with the Twitch drone. Uh, Twitch, a very strong operator these days. <laughs> Where's those bullets coming from? <laughs> you tell GM Beast was trying to figure that one as well. But it's Kinger. Who else who secures an early kill here? All right. So, St. Clair, doing St. Clair things. Please don't run out shares. That would be very bad of you. They're teasing it with the impact grenade breaking down the green barricade, but the player on the other side of the wall from Edwardsville is going to hightail out of the position. Why is do not take that confrontation? Because, well, the bomb sets on the other side of the map, but right now Edwardsville needs to prioritize their vertical hold. They do have a decent foothold over in VIP Penthouse Theater, but there's a wrinkle in that plan, and that's the retake. Rapid is going to finish off a DBNO player, but a little bit too focused on the player that was down, and unfortunately, they're going to tunnel vision and end up losing their life through that process. That's going to be the trade that Edwardsville needed, Tristan. However, the man advantage, while it was close, is now going to be once again lopsided in favor of the Saints as it's a 4v2 with not a lot of time left in the round, 70 seconds. Oryx is going to get their forehead spotted as it was, well, kind of a bold jump up through the hatch. <laughs> He's just trying to get out of the pool, man. <laughs> He's just sticking his head up. Good kill right there on the shares, by the way. Just guns him down through the wall, so the lesion is taken out of the equation. Less than a minute left in the round as Kinger looks across the courtyard there, but sees no targets in sight just yet. Still, neither of the attackers near the bomb site. That's where they need to be as Sledge goes to work here on the floor. It's me, Chuck D, the one who's opening up all that real estate. And he sees those bullets winging his way from across the way, and he will back up into the corner there for a second as the frag grenades start but there's genuinely no one to frag down there i don't think they entirely realize that both the defenders actually in the process of closing back on the site as we speak king are watching pool vibes knows that they might have to take that artery to get in salty boy jesus is pushing up here into the kitchen proper now watching over towards the service entrance swings on the window somehow gets a headshot on soy the bean that just leaves chuck d and the commander seat here it's not a very enviable position as Kinger secures the final kill on the round. Tristan, I don't think that was a commander's seat. I think that was an ejection seat because Edwardsville got jettisoned out of coastline. It was a, a dominant performance from St. Clair to begin that round. Two opening kills to their names. I mean, and a valiant effort from Edwardsville to trade it back to a 2v2, but I'm going to have to kind of be once again blunt. That was St. Clair making far too many mistakes, getting far too greedy. They wanted those kills on the top floor, and they just played too aggressive, and ultimately they put it in a very winnable position for Edwardsville in that 2v2, but Edwardsville's time management would ultimately be their undoing because vaulting in through that kitchen window hatch with 20 seconds left, it's very transparent, and most teams are going to be able to shut you down, especially the vaulting animation. True, very true. Um, and that, that's unfortunately just how it goes sometimes as we look here to game or to match and map point, as it were. The Cougars have had a rough day today, but hopefully they'll be able to take something out of this. And it's Rook, by the way, being brought out by Rapid, winning as defensive operator. According to our later statistics, uh, our latest statistics, I should say, in, in Plat and above, just, just like to remind everybody of that. That's my fault. He's, is that your fault for playing too much? I, I, I have been playing Rook Red Dot Suppressor P90 for the past <laughs> season. What? what I, even, first, I, why would you play that well, first instead off, of the MP5? Well, first off, I, I, I hate uh, zoomed optics, so I run one time to begin with. So that's, that's one fair, reason why okay. I don't gravitate towards the MP5. But also the P90 has 50 bullets and it lasers. And it could be basically like a pseudo LMG, and you could just kind of run around the map and hose. Oh no, no rapid! Oh no! What? 
It's me, Chuck D. Walks right into the gun sight. Hate on zoomed optics all you want over there, Brian, but they certainly were beneficial right there to Rapid, who just reminds them of his My presence bad. in the lobby. Frank, frankly, it's good to see that It's Me Chuck D is cool about it, though. He, he lets him know that it was a nice shot, and it was indeed, but that unfortunately starts this match point round off a little rough, but a good, good, good effort there from JM Beast as well to slow it down. I appreciate that Pineapple is trying to challenge, but this is, a again, an unenviable position to be in as JM Beast there just goes ahead and gets another kill to their name. Oh, boy. Well, this is devolved into chaos. I mean, let's be blunt. It's been chaos for quite a while. Now, Soy the Bean on the... Pardon? Hello? <laughs> uh, okay, well, I'm just going to move on from there and forget I've been... What is going on? Why are we outside, JM Beast? Why are we dropping nitrous cells on teammates? Oh, my. Okay, well, this round became completely... Went from unwinnable, practically impossible, a 5v2 to a 3v2. All of a sudden, it's possible for Edwardsville to bring this from the brink of destruction. Salty Boy, DBNO, and that likelihood of a win here on the downstairs bombsite bar bar, as it's known, it's actually quite doable. Salty is in position to get res, plus once you start to incorporate the fact that the gumball machines of T-Bird are still active, I mean, Salty will be brought back up, but there is an opportunity cost to their DBNO. They won't be able to enter that state again. Waffles lost a drone. That's unfortunate. Oh, Waffles gets another kill, though. Waffles on the triple kill here on match point. He's putting in the performance of the night. Unfortunately, Soy the Bean is dead, and everything rests on the shoulders of one brave piece of breakfast pastry. And I just don't know if he can do it here. He's going to try his best, though. Fires a couple of shots in right there. Goes back, reloads the AK-12, and now just playing outside the doors, waiting to see if anyone's bold enough to challenge him. But I think the challenging days might be over here for the last two St. Clair defenders as they just wait patiently inside. So, one drone to your name. You could use that to gather information, but you have to remember that Salty Boy is a vigil and will be able to duck dive away from the information gathering of that Rolly Pulley drone. And Waffles has spent a lot of time in this position. They're trying to open up new angles and find an avenue to the bomb site. The first of the Selma's miss, but again, that Selma has a beautiful line of shite and to one of the players sitting back between the A-bomb chassis. Oh! There it is. There's the kill that Dude, was required. Waffles. And... And now Kinger spotted by the two-time sight. The head lined up, but Waffles misses the shot. He knows exactly where he is. He's going to ingress into the bomb site, but he's still missing the shots. The no! full's on up, and it's not good. Oh, the catastrophe in the end. The ace within grasp. Almost there. The hopes of Edwardsville relying upon that ace, and it doesn't end up going in that direction. A heartbreaking end. And well done to Noah King, who was the standout performer in Clubhouse to stay calm under pressure in that 1v1. Yeah, good effort there, there from Kinger. He he nearly, he nearly got clipped right there at the very start of that, but the shot just pulled wide just a little bit. I don't know. It felt like that was not the first time tonight that we have seen people who almost certainly should have died over there on their side, somehow not dying, but really obviously it was Rapid, who was another big star of that coastline map. The almost back-to-back -back aces there in rounds one and two were a distinctive performance. All in all, Brian, a clinic uh, from St. Clair. Not a lot more to be said about it from them. A very solid performance and hopefully uh the folks from edwardsville can look back at that footage get an idea of what happened and learn a few things that they can apply going forward in the future and i really hope that edwardsville doesn't get frustrated from this game and from their week one matchup yeah. they played purdue top three team in the united states or pardon me in, in north america and now they played st Clair, another nationally rated team top 25 yeah. and i mean you're playing against some of the best teams in collegian for your first matchups yeah. here in necc so I, we we want to really emphasis or put emphasis on the fact that Edwardsville has played against some of the best teams, and again, they're just demonstrating some growing pains. They're not used to playing at this level, where St. Clair has been playing against the best of the best for years now. I mean, there's two seniors on that roster, so they're very experienced. And you know what? It takes a lot to perform at the upper echelon of collegiate, but Edwardsville is most certainly able to achieve that once they you know work out some of those mistakes.
Yeah, I, I think that there were some good moments of potential there from Edwardsville, right? There were some rounds where they, they did what they needed to do. There was a rounds where they demonstrated some good gun skill. I mean, you know, it's nice that I, it's unfortunate, right, that the ace was not secured there at the end by Waffle because that would have been amazing. But it's nice almost in a way that that was kind of how it went out because, you know, you can take a little bit of pride in that right to the bitter end. You know, you were fighting it out. You were getting kills. It, it wasn't it, as bad as the scoreline was ultimately, you know, you were trying. And I think that in the chat before coastline even started i think one of the players it might have been it's me chuck d literally said you know we're trying and at the end of the day that means you haven't given up so that's good that's good for forward momentum and progress as a team and hopefully their mental doesn't shock and hopefully they use today's matchup the purdue matchup from week number one to learn grow and better themselves when they eventually do enter into the postseason of necc we're only in week three ladies and gentlemen so quite a bit of ways from that postseason and with that being said rainbow six siege will be departing we'll be back though next week on wednesday it's going to start at 3 p.m pacific standard time 6 p.m eastern make sure you tune into that and if you love other esports necc is always running things on the main channel so make sure you tune in at the same time for tomorrow for more beautiful matchups i believe it's rock league tomorrow until next time my friends stay safe stay well it's been tristan parker my name has been brian schubert we'll see you next week